it's okay. I have a kitten outside my door screaming to be let in. Hello. It's us. We're back. Welcome to Say a Prayer for California Sister Cities. Um, I am, I, had, I don't know why I said um like I don't know who I am. I'm Abaddon Kilbride the Fourth. People call me DK to save time. People also call me Dinah because that's who I play. And I'm really excited that we are moving into kind of this, this second leg of our little campaign here. Uh, as you can see, we have, our, we have our guest friend Charlie back with us. I will let them introduce themselves. Uh, who else is here? Uh, I am Allison Farrell. I play Riot Puck Peepfellow, who's she's got some stuff going on all over the place. Hi, I'm Kristen. I play Candy. She is... She's going through a lot right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, that's where we're at. Like, yeah, there's there's no words. Uh, Wraith, I play Abandoned Scarrow. I'm also very sleepy today, so we're gonna see how that goes. Uh, not Ooh, quite as sleepy fresh. as... Uh, yeah, not quite as sleepy as him, because I did actually sleep last night, but we'll see. Uh, hi, I'm Spencer, I'm playing Ferris Hoke, and I'm just really nervous that Charlie's back this week. I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> You and me both. And hi, I'm Charlie, and yes, I'm playing Signe, one of the gunpowder diplomats and very old friend of Dinah. Uh, and I am so incredibly excited to be able to have a real long talk with Ferris. <laughs> Hope you like brick walls. Make kind of all that eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds so nefarious and spooky and i live for it okay so when we last left off um the confederacy of island ends had gone through a series of drastic changes bunny bishop resigned from the confederacy of island ends in light of the return of her sisters in hopes of taking care of them and her uncle chapter and dinah had some choice words for the confederacy before taking them on a little field trip the field trip was through the door of the mausoleum into a building somewhere in Wyoming. Uh, that building was Hecatonkeries, which is a secret joint base of operations between the gunpowder diplomats and their sister platoons, the special forces of the Bureau. They had a meeting with the gunpowder diplomats and some of their sister platoon, the Renegade Angels, where they discussed the situation in Beltsville and a few wanted notices that had been handed out to a couple members of the confederacy of those present riot and candy i should mention as a point of clarity candy your wanted poster does not have your name on it it just has a picture of you um and after that they sat around and learned a little bit about the draft and what it is like to go through military training with the bureau awful is the short version but it seems to have worked out for the gunpowder diplomats and their friends in terms of lifelong relationships. We are going to pick back up just after the meeting as everyone is dispersing and kind of going off with the different diplomats that have been assigned to them. Um, nowhere and elsewhere, who have been present but just kind of quiet and listening, uh, as you are heading down the stairs, Nowhere goes up to Spectre and taps him on the shoulder and waits for him to turn around so that he can see him. And he says, There must be a gun range here, right? You must have somewhere to practice. And uh, Spectre. Talk again? <laughs> he, uh, yeah, I forgot. His fucking windpipe is still crushed. He's texting. It's fine. Um, He's got a whiteboard. Something. <laughs> piece of paper. Uh, and Spectre actually does sign and again the words appear uh in the air in front of him uh and what he says is of course there's a gun range why are you looking to get your ass kicked and nowhere smiles and elsewhere who is standing beside his brother says if y'all are gonna go downstairs and compare dicks i would like to go and humble you both <laughs> uh <laughs> you <and elsewhere. laughs> specter is kind of surprised that there are now two of nowhere uh, this is he, getting out of hand. He did not meet <laughs> elsewhere the day before, and nobody warned him that nowhere was a twin. So he kind of <laughs> takes a minute and just looks between the two of them and then nods and signs, you're on. 
And without any further ado or, or word to anyone else, the three of them break off and just leave the room and head off in the direction of wherever this gun range is. Very sick that the only one who can verbally speak right in that group right now is so <laughs> <laughs> much to say. <laughs> you, uh, you all head out of the meeting room and begin to move downstairs, down all four flights of stairs, back down to the atrium so you can disperse to uh, your separate areas. And as you get to the base of the stairs, you hear somebody yell, on Dinah, on Signy! And Dinah is immediately slammed into by a smaller person. She takes it full force, and it looks like it hurts her, but all she says is, oh, hey, buddy, hey, it's good to see you. And she pulls him into a big hug, even using her bad arm, and kind of buries her face in his hair, and then pushes him back a little bit and says, okay, did you get taller in the last two weeks? And the boy, I don't think so. She says, no, no, I think you did. I think you did. Turn around. Let me get a look at you. And he dutifully kind of rotates on the spot. And once he's facing her, she leans in and she says, you definitely got taller. And he looks at Dinah and Signe and he says, are you guys back? Are, like, are you, are you here now? And Dinah looks at Signe. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm And you watch as this boy's face just lights up. And he says, what about everybody else? Is Uncle Messy here too? And Dinah says, yep. Messi's upstairs. Uh, he's finishing some stuff up in the cybersecurity lab, but he'll be downstairs a little bit later. We're all moving back home. He says, oh, good, 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 good. Uh, a little bit further off, you hear the faint voice of Sissy St. Marie say, well, boy, didn't I tell you not to run in the house? <laughs> and he kind of just looks over his shoulder and he says, sorry, Aunt Sissy. I, sorry, I forgot. I got excited. She says, it's okay. Just don't do it again. And uh, Dinah kind of puts her hand on his shoulder and she looks at the Confederacy and she says, everybody, this is Antony. Antony, these are some of our, our newer friends. Uh, that's Riot, that's Candy, that's Abandon, and that's Ferris. Ferris, he looks at you and he says, would it be okay if I pet your horse? Uh, <laughs> let me ask him. Hey, Phil Collins. Yes? Let's get cool. He looks extremely cool, yes. I'm fine with it. <laughs> he says yes, go nuts. And he, you notice that as he walks up, he is covered in dirt. Uh, of course he is. He's, he's, a boy. he's wearing uh, like uh, tight jeans that are beginning to ride up his ankles. Uh, like very, very dirty green chucks. There's dirt all over the knees of his pants. He's got dirt under his nails. And he kind of wipes his hands on himself before he goes to pet Phil Collins. And he just pets his side and he says... Wow, I, I, your horse is really nice. Dinah cuts Thanks. eyes at him and says, we are not getting you a horse. <laughs> we have room. We're not getting you a horse. Tall as candy God, in relation to this kid. Oh, he's growing pretty quickly, so he's at least six inches taller than candy. How old, how old does he look? He looks, he looks like he is younger than the Beauregard triplets. Okay. He looks maybe 13 or 14. Okay. Candy kind of stands on her tiptoes and leans in. I know somebody that's got lots of horses if you want to go visit the darling. He looks, Dinah, he looks at Dinah and Signy, hopefully. Can we go see the horses? They'd let you ride horses there and you could go and visit. Candy. Candy. Remember that Biltsville is maybe not the best place right now? Uh, Dinah kind of, like, cuffs him on the side of the head and says, Look, we will discuss you going to see the horses, but now that I'm thinking about it, you have a test on Friday, don't you? And he looks kind of sheepish, and he says, Yeah, yeah, Mr. Misperian is testing me on, on history again. Mm. What are you up to now? World War One? Yeah, he keeps talking about France, but it's not France the country, it's France a person, and I don't really know what that means, and he's a real hard grader, and she says, all right, all right, all right, all right, I'll tell you what, I, we have some stuff that we gotta go do, some, we have some business we gotta take care of, but tonight before you and Sissy say your prayers, I'll go over it with you, okay? I wanna make sure you pass, can't have you being an idiot like Messi, and he, he <laughs> smiles. 
Right, right. Goes, remember this. This is the only thing I really remember from middle school. It always goes back to laissez fair. I don't lazy. I don't even know. Lazy fair. I, lazy fair. fair. Lazy fair. Okay, it That's always goes back to lazy fair. Less affairs. Laissez fair. Less affairs. Less. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you'll oh. learn that eventually. I think he. Uh, I don't know. He looks around and goes, "Oh, I have something to show you." And he whistles, and he waits for a second. And it's it's like thirty seconds, and then a beautiful luna moth comes just floating into the atrium and lands on his shoulder and says, look what I found out in the garden. I think it's my pet name. And he's all like, this is my glimmerling. Can we get one of those? <laughs> if he if he gets hurt, he explodes and heals us. <laughs> Can I do? No, you can't do that. No, no. I, don't, I cannot do that. <laughs> no. no. I will tell you what you can do. Since we have some stuff that we gotta go take care of, you can go wash your hands and face, first of all. And then, you remember we told you about our friend Big Baby, the mess cook? He's here. He's down in the kitchen, and we can't go see him yet. So you, what you can do is do us a favor and go keep him company. And you've been pretty good, so tell him, tell him we said you could have a snack. Andy has very surreptitiously hidden a taffy in his pocket. <laughs> He is completely unaware. He is just so <laughs> excited that his grown-up friends are back that you're fully able to just pop just pop it in his pocket for him to find later. And he says, Okay, alright, yeah, I'll go I'll go down to the kitchen and you're sure he's gonna give me a snack. Yes, I'm sure. I'm sure he will give you a <laughs> snack. Okay, and then as he's turning around to head back, she says, Wait, what did we learn about Big Baby? And he turns around and as as if by memory he says if I saw him crying to Homeward Bound, no, I didn't. <laughs> Good boy. All right, go on, get out of my sight. Get out of here. And you he... Know, Di... Let's just say, you know, Dinah, that's a good rule for anybody. That is the rule for everybody. Uh, he you will know... not feed you if you comment on how much he is weeping at the movie Homeward Bound. Oh, well, I she's... agree with that. I was just saying, for if you catch anybody crying at Homeward Bound, you didn't see it. That's true. It's a tear-jerking movie. It's a good one. And the, the young boy scampers off in the direction of what you presume to be the kitchens. And Dinah just... He is so big now. Holy shit. Whose kid is he? Ours. Cool! Yeah, that's ours. Yeah. I mean, finders keepers, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's kind of how I had parents! Yeah. Uh, Sissy well, found but... him in a building somewhere in Kentucky, and we couldn't leave him there. So we smuggled him into a transport and brought him back to Kansas. And now he's ours. He used to live with Missy's dad, but now that we have a place for him to grow up and get into trouble, we moved him here. Okay, I gotta go make some phone calls and try and clean up some of this clusterfuck. So, just to refresh my memory, Signy, you're taking Ferris and abandoned. Lamb Chop, Lamb Chop, Lamb Chop, where did you- And then, from like, down the hall, you hear, I'm over here! Sorry, I was checking up. I'm here! And she comes trotting up, and it's um, it's a goth girl who's about your height, Candy. Uh, she's wearing a black tack suit, but very, very heavy black makeup and black lipstick. She's got short, dark hair that kind of curls around her shoulders. Uh, and she says, I'm here. Sorry. I got distracted. Her and I are totally that meme of the rainbow girl and the goth girl. <laughs> and she kind of scans everyone, and she does zoom in on you. And she's... Well, hi, kitten. You must be you must be my new charge. I'm Lamb Chop. Go play. <laughs> well, why don't you come with me? I don't know what the rest of y'all are doing, but there is so much to play with downstairs. So, Dinah, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna go ahead and steal her now. <laughs> I don't mind. Don't blow anything up. No promises. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking regret that pairing immediately. <laughs> Uh, and then she says, and prom, you're gonna, you're gonna take Riot, right? And says, yeah. Mm, I figured I'd show her the garage. Yeah, that's a good idea. Right. That, oh, that kind of reminds me, Dinah. Um, I don't have my bike for a little while. Just, I don't know how long, but, I mean, we're gonna, he, he's gonna show me how to fix it, but, uh, yeah. 
Okay. Well, I'm sorry about your bike, but we'll see what we can do in the meantime. Yeah, I just, no, like, I just, you know, if you need to send me somewhere. Well, or whatever. And Dinah starts to say, well, and Prom says, don't worry. We'll wait till you see the garage. Well, if you need a ride somewhere, we got you covered. Okay. And you all head off in your Paris is gonna. Paris is going to lean over to abandon. How long do you give them before they get lost on their way to the broom closet? <laughs> he, just, he doesn't even respond. <laughs> <laughs> She's not going to touch that at all. I think I'd get lost Mom is. to find the broom closet. I haven't gossiped with him yet. We'll get there. I don't even know if I don't even know if Hecatonkery has a broom closet. To be honest, it seems right? like the kind of like, thing that we would overlook. When, I like there's got to be it one. It is in there clean somewhere. in here. Somebody's had to like somebody has been sweeping. Gunba's been sweeping. Gunba. <laughs> oh yes, uh, Charlie. Because you weren't here for that episode, Dinah does have a Roomba with a uh, gun <laughs> attached to it. It fires very small bullets. Just a little 22. Definitely the first thing that she brought from home when she started moving out of the Bishop Estate. Definitely. Oh my god. Uh, okay, Early. so we're... Oh, first yawn. Fuck. We are gonna begin with... Start the counter. Uh, Signe and Ferris and Abandon because I think it's gonna be very funny. So... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna mute myself. I'm just gonna mute myself. <laughs> Hair. Signe, uh... If you would like, probably the most private place to talk is going to be the garden that's out back. Are you are you looking to keep this private, or or does that matter to you at this point, Charlie? Sorry, you were talking to me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, private with these two. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, crowd for that kind of thing. I mean, better than the 40 or so people that were in the room that you were in before. True. Uh, so you head out of the front door, which no longer leads to the mausoleum. It does lead to, like, a front porch. And Signe leads you all the way around the side of this massive building. It is a huge, huge building. And you notice from the outside that it looks like a dilapidated building. It does not look like a mansion on the outside. It looks like the building has been condemned. Uh, and as you head around and around and around and around the side of the building, you make it into uh, the the backyard functionally, which is about half an acre of land. And you can see some kind of like marker posts in the distance. And the, the garden itself is uh, you see like a, I forget what it's fucking called, the little wooden archway, the fancy wooden archway. You see one of those? Trellises? Yes. Um, and heading through that, you see probably 20 or 30 raised bed gardens that are all portioned out and have different signs on them. There's also a freestanding greenhouse that looks like it is lush with greenery. Uh, and Signe, you know that if you head inside, there's a hammock in there and a bunch of chairs. It's pretty cozy. <laughs> Perfect. Excellent. Ah, yes. It's been so long since I've been in this garden. And I just take like a really, really deep breath. Ah. <laughs> and then I turn around and I stare at Ferris. Hmm. I thought I asked you to stop doing that. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. I'm, we, we've, we've already had some small conversations, if you can call them that, leading up to this point. Uh, I'm going to get to you. Uh, <laughs> just wanted to say that it, it is nice to officially meet you in person. Does it count as in person if it... I, yes, in, in the flesh at the very least. Um, <clears throat> and then I turn to Abandon, and I'm saying, You! You are such a mystery to me right now. I know a bunch about this guy right here already. I got loads to talk to him about, but I don't know... I don't know anything about you yet, and you seem B. Yeah, yeah, it's 
it's already been a week uh, before yesterday happened, so. Hmm. I... What, what happened to you yesterday? If you don't mind my asking. Uh, a, a lot happened. That's kind of a vague question. I, I guess you just seem in a worse place than your compatriots. They all seem to be in rather high spirits. Uh, candy especially. I don't know if it's all the sugar or what exactly is going on with her, but... I mean, I... I sorry? I, I wouldn't trust that entirely, but... Fair. I guess you just, you just got a lot that you're wearing on your face right now, and I would love to hear you talk about it if you're able to talk about it. Uh... I mean, a lot of that is just exhaustion. I have not slept in four days now. Um, wait, wait, I'm sorry. Wait, wait, <laughs> wait. You, ha you haven't slept in four days. Uh, call it an experiment. No, I won't. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> uh, that, it just seems like a... Okay, so if it is an experiment, what exactly is the uh, is the X factor here that we're looking to, to discover? I I have trouble sleeping, uh, just in general. Yeah, um, no shit. You've known me a day. You just told me you haven't slept in four days intentionally um that still counts I, I have trouble sleeping um and it's i it affects the work i do for the ends so the idea uh because nobody managed to talk me out of it i don't know if it's gonna work or not but i figure if I can function under extreme levels of insomnia, I'll be better at handling the normal ones. It's... no Nobody told me it was a smart idea, but it's something I figured I'd try. How's that... How, how has it been going for you so far? I mean, it sucks but I expected it to suck. I'm not dead yet. I'm still upright and moving. And your performance the other night, was that under the influence of any lack of sleep? I wish I could say yes, but I don't think I would have done much better if I was as well rested as I normally would be. What makes you I say maybe that? I wouldn't have crashed the bike. Maybe I wouldn't have crashed the <laughs> bike because I would have maybe seen the fucking barricade. But I still, I still would have disobeyed some of the orders Dinah gave. Singing so just like nods softly at first, and, and then it grows a little bit more aggressive. She's clearly working some thoughts out. She just, like, turns and starts, like, uh, gently touching some of the uh, vegetables that are growing in the raised beds. They're not quite ripe yet. They're just kind of on their way there. And Signe just delicately touches some of the little budding things coming through. And quietly, she says, You almost killed Dinah. Well, not you directly. I can't blame you for that. I really can't. But I just... I know what it's like to disobey orders. To want to disobey orders. To need to disobey orders. I do. All three of them. But... I'm not gonna lie to you, Abandon. I'm a little scared of what's to come. You seem 
like a really, really sharp blade here. Despite your lack of sleep, you are clearly capable. And I want you to be a good and valuable asset to us here. But you make me really nervous. When we were at the table, and I was asking your friend Riot, you know, if they were willing to do everything, they had so much passion behind their answer, you know. And when Dino was questioning you, you said that you were with us for now. And Signe just kind of grips the wooden bed of one of the planters and squats at it, and exhales really, really heavily. I don't need your loyalty for now. I need it for the long run, Abandon. I'm scared of anything less. I mean, that's fair. Look, I'm... I'm... I know I'm not cut out for this. And I'm planning on trying to ignore that fact and trying to give everything I can. There... I know there are things I'm willing to do for Dinah, and I know that there is something that would prevent me from doing what needs to be done here. I, Dinah was right. My mom takes precedence over, over everything for me. If there's a way I can guarantee her safety, and that would take that out of the equation, but I can't promise that I would risk her. You can have me. I'm not afraid of, of getting hurt or dying for this, but I'm not risking her. Signe jumps up pretty quickly and does another sharp little exhale and says, okay. Okay. I think that's fair. And golly, I don't know if I should count ourselves lucky or cursed as diplomats that so many of us didn't have parents to weigh into the uh, equation there. It's something that I can't really relate to, and I will do my best to try and not hold that against you. Y'all want to check out this greenhouse? There's a bear shit in the woods. <laughs> Signy laughs and just or like starts trotting over to the greenhouse. Does mention uh, <clears throat> there is a hammock in here, by the way, abandoned. Uh, I'm not encouraging you to sleep or nothing, since I don't want you to ruin your streak if that's what you're going for. But it is mighty comfortable if you'd like to hop up up there. I'll just take your word for it. <laughs> Bears, do like you want to try the hammock? After the tour. Oh, well... Signy, like, opens up the doors to the greenhouse, and it's just a mess. <laughs> it's just... It's just an overgrown mess uh, of stuff. There's actually not really a whole, whole lot of room to, to, to walk around, but in the back corner, there is, in fact, that nice hammock there's a few chairs set up a nice little like very 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 old decrepit looking chaise lounge i imagine um <clears throat> and most of the things that are growing uh are just like really really pretty flowers that have uh been like they've just they've gone on a little too long and Signe just looks around and he's like oh yeah hmm. right it has been a while <laughs> mine's probably in the same state right about now Oh, you have a greenhouse. Had one. 
I had to leave it behind. Had. Oh. But, uh, right. Figured I'd let it go feral, you know. Who am I to tear up those plants just because I'm not going to be around? I don't have that kind of arrogance. Yeah, I guess. I kind of just forgot. I just forget about things the moment I leave them behind. I don't think I, I put that much thought into it. Huh. Anyways, Signy <laughs> turns and looks at the, the tall boy Ferris. He's not terribly tall, but I guess everybody's tall when you're under five feet. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, being 4'11", I'm a little... I'm a little... Well, no, I'm not a little. <laughs> Golly! I... That's a very different relationship dynamic! <laughs> so he just <clears throat> tries to busy herself with anything uh, to detract from that little uh, slip-up. Uh, it, it, Phil Collins has been following us, right? I don't think he can fit in here. Uh, no, actually, and I was meaning to ask about that. Um, Diana mentioned something about the grounds being dangerous or some such. I, are there, like, anti-personnel mines or something in the ground? Like, can I just let him go for a run? Oh I'm my gonna, god, that's a wonderful question. I don't I'm, actually know. I'm gonna jump in, because I don't think that I covered this with Charlie. You know that those boundary markers on the edge of the property are not to be crossed. It is very, very bad if you do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so then... You know, Phil can be around you and us. Phil Collins, there's definitely say the Phil, whole thing. Phil, okay, yeah, all right, Phil Collins. Okay. He gets mad if you don't. Well, I, I, I didn't hear him correct me. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. You're fine. Uh, Phil Collins, then, polite. is allowed to, to be around you and around us, but definitely keep your eye on him and don't let him just wander off uh, on his own because there are absolutely areas around here where he does not need to be. We do not need to be. Nobody needs to be. Because uh, if we go there, we're probably going to get hurt real bad. The specifics of which I was not clued in on. I was just told to stay the, away from there, so that's exactly what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> but I at least always have my two giant Great Danes with me. That when they do sit, I imagine they are taller than me. I'd like to think so. Uh, ears standing straight up and everything. <laughs> Because I wanted to ask you about Phil Collins, I really did. Where exactly did you find such a specimen? See, that's kind of the thing. Um, I didn't. Oh. Just sorta happened one day. He just he just showed up. Something like that, yeah. And he introduced himself to you as Phil Collins. You have to understand. At the time. I was on a lot of stuff. I figured this might as well happen. When I finally dried out, and the horse was still talking to me, I figured I'd finally gone off the deep end. But oh. you know, let me ride him, and uh, he's good enough company, so I just never bothered to send him away. That is fantastic. Yeah, that's a word for it. Well, you said he's fine company, so I imagine. Yeah, I don't know about the whole being on too many stuff thing. Uh, that does sound like a journey in and of itself. Yeah. There's some stuff out there that, uh... You don't want to eat. Tatura, anyone? <laughs> he's going to produce a, a strange bag of seeds from his pocket and uh, shake it around. Ooh. No, seriously, don't eat this stuff. It'll kill you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't, you know. I'll try anything twice. Mm, not this. We're not careful. Okay, well then don't offer. Like... <laughs> oh, you can candy from strangers? Well, I mean... Shit, I have done that. Yeah, I don't, it's, it's been fine. It's been fine thus far. I don't think. I don't think. No, it's fine. You're 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 right. You're right. I shouldn't just eat magic random, not magic seeds from random people who don't like being looked at. Yeah. Stop that. 
Ah, uh, okay, you're right. I'm sorry. I will avert my my gaze accordingly. Looking up at you hurts my neck anyhow. <clears throat> so tell me though, I want to know a little bit more about you getting called. What about it? I guess. Well, like, how'd you get so hurt? Did you, you know, get that's... really hurt? You're asking uh, a lot of questions there. Yeah, I said I was gonna be. And technically, I think it's only been... No, no, I mean... Five. Never mind. You're going to be a bit more specific, is what I mean. Ah. Uh. But if you must know... I really there's a lake do. up in Oregon. Lake Aspen, I think. We got ambushed. Nobody walked away from it. A week later, I find myself in a ranger station. Yeah. That's about all I remember, really. You don't remember what happened between then and you waking up? Well, I do remember Death himself coming to me, asking me if I was ready. Well, my dumbass thought it was Death, but... Clearly I wasn't that lucky, because... Here you are. Unfortunately. You kind of wish you, uh, you didn't make it then? I wish that I didn't get tricked. But, okay. you know how he is. Well, Moments not, of weakness. not quite, actually. I don't actually, I had a very different experience, I guess you could say. Um, mm, because based on when that I... sharing circle we had upstairs, it sounds like there's more in common than you think. Yeah. I sort of, uh, I can't really describe it, but when I died, I, uh, called them myself. There was like a, how to describe this, like a thread. And I grabbed it. And I followed it all the way back to what I'm pretty sure were the gates of Valhalla. Looked exactly how I imagined they'd look, at least. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> and it was there, actually, that I, uh, stumbled upon... Not death. No, not death. Uh, someone else. Someone else. Um... You know, she's... I don't really know how to describe her. A mentor. God, she is just lovely. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, no, uh, and it was there. I more or less uh, struck the deal myself. Hmm. Did you have any idea what you were getting yourself into? I think it was worth it for what I asked for. It's not what I asked you. I asked if you knew what you were getting yourself into. Yeah, I knew what I was getting myself into. I didn't. I do think informed consent is very important. And I'm sorry that you didn't have much a clue. Way she goes, boys, way she goes. Way she fucking goes. Still... You are here now. You have so much at your disposal now. And a cause. Things are really lining up for you, Ferris. Do you still... Do you still feel bitter about it? I'll get back to you when I have an answer to that question. Well... 
asking about your present state of being. It's been hard to narrow, nail down, you know. I guess that's fair. I just... What do you want me to talk about what's holding me back from committing myself to this team? Mm, Is well, this what we're doing? I mean, we're doing group therapy here? Group therapy? Fuck, I'm not a therapist. For God, for nothing. No, I want, I want soldiers. I see a bunch of, uh, a bunch of inexperienced, uh, rich kids with parents and, you know, ties, emotional <laughs> ties and tethers to this world. Uh, <laughs> and I want an army. I don't have an army, though. I got, I got all y'all. And I just think yeah, it'd be a lot cooler <laughs> if you were more committed, personally speaking. Signy hops over to the hammock at this point. Doesn't lie down, just sitting in it. Kicking her feet. Well, fortunately for you, I got nowhere better to be right now. <laughs> well, with that personality, you don't have tons of friends and connections that you could just be off doing something much cooler? No, what was your first time? What was my what? What was your first hint? Oh, um, uh, well, I'm... The evasion? The general unpleasantness? The desire to not be looked at? Well, I haven't experienced much unpleasantness personally. You're not Yet. a potty mouth. Hmm. Hmm. Ben, and why don't you tell him what I left on your front lawn yesterday? <laughs> uh, seems like she's kind of into that kind of thing. Wait, no, what did he leave you on your Fair front point. lawn? Don't worry about it. Wait. A burnt corpse? Oh, well, no, I'm not into burnt corpses. No, but it was Vesper's kid. <sighs> In my defense, I didn't know it at the time. I'd rather it just be Vesper. But yeah, well. we're gonna get there, I promise. And if you, uh, if you're capable of leaving the burnt bodies of Esper's children on people's doorsteps. Even while resisting being fully committed to the cause? Dang. Well, that's because I'm not like these kids from Beltsville. I'm not a rich kid with parents and connections. I'm a killer. Just like you no. are. I think you know I got it. that. Whatever that's worth. So if you need a problem, like disappeared. Oh. I just like soldiers more. Well, we'll see how I do. Yeah. All you really have to do... Insigni hops off the hammock now. Tries to look big. She's failing a little miserably, but she's trying. All I need you to do, really, is everything we say the less thinking i have to do the better it's actually delightful to hear wait is this a thirst for power wait is this awakening never mind we're gonna we're gonna move on and move out i appreciate you guys for walking with me and talking with me and everything aren't we supposed to be on some kind of tour yeah, I can, I'm showing you around, and we're, we're leaving the garden and stuff. I'm just saying, I appreciate the conversation that you've had with me leading up to this point. Sure thing. Do you want to fight? I don't like losing, so no. That's fair. Abandon? I'm good, thanks. I'm not helping you if you do. <laughs> All right, next time, though. It's gonna come. Sorry, pardon, you cut out there. <laughs> and Signy just whispers, and you're gonna lose. Oh. 
Alrighty, All right. we are going to cut away from this conversation and from this part of the tour. We'll jump back to you guys in a little bit. I would like to see where Riot and Prometheus are. Oh god. Uh, I'm assuming they are walking to the garage. Um, she would like to go once they're kind of on their own a little bit, be like, so how are you feeling? A little tired. We were up pretty late last night clearing debris, and I went back after I dropped your bike off, but... Hmm, I'm okay. Okay. Just you look worried. Head. Um... I don't know. I mean, I'm scared for my parents. Um... I actually feel a lot better than I have in a really long time. Diplomats have that way about them. I, I I gotta confess a little bit. I, I have spent the last year super, like, kind of freaking out that I was gonna, like, snap and go crazy. I mean, it's kind of a natural response to the world that we live in at this point. I, I don't know. I think I'd be more worried if you were okay with the way that things are. And you, you saw the killing draw from the inside, right, last year? Oh, yeah, I almost ruined shit because I couldn't handle- I got so mad at the end that I tackled a bunch of guards before we even found Dinah. It's, but I'm more it's not a great place. I don't blame oh, you. Oh no, I- I have been fantasizing for the past year about going back and burning that shit to the ground and freeing everybody inside. It comes with its own problems. I mean, I know- you know, I know it's not all as simple as what I'm sure I've been daydreaming about, but nice to think about. It'll happen someday. It's on the list. Yeah. But I was more thinking about the fact that, like, you know, I I killed a guy last year. And I went home and I slept great. And I had a great time. Felt good. And the past year, I have been like chomping at the bit, you know, and kind of afraid. Like I've been very, you know, everybody's doing the whole. You gotta calm down, Riot. Stop, dude. Relax. It's okay. <laughs> and I really was afraid I was gonna like snap and hurt somebody. That was that was kind of the fear. But I, I feel better knowing that I'm not on the verge of becoming like a sociopathic mass murderer. That was that was a, that was a concern I had. No, I mean, that might happen after boot camp, but up to this point, I think you're okay. Okay. No, it's good to know at least there's a point A and point B. Well, do you want to see my real garage? Yes, absolutely. Oh my god. Uh, Prom has been leading you kind of around the side of the building in the opposite direction that Ferris and Abandon and Sydney went, and he leads you to... A garage the size of a gymnasium that adjoins this dilapidated house. And uh, he manually lifts the shutter. And so, come on, come on. I don't wanna, I don't know who's watching, but come on. And no, lifts it enough for you to get under. Yeah, he, she, she'll scoot herself under. He closes it behind you, and you turn to look, and there are probably. 30 or 40 cars in this garage. You see Dinah's car, you see Mona Lisa's pink hearse, uh, you see uh, a couple of sports cars, you see a couple of like Jeeps that have mounted guns on them. There's a whole range of cars that are here. And he kind of walks into the middle of the room between the two separate rows of cars and kind of opens his arms wide and says, so this is where I spend my spare time. Oh my God. That wow. We've had a long time to collect resources. Uh, getting everything here was a nightmare, but we did it. Did I hear the? Did I hear Wyoming? Are we yeah. in Wyoming? Somewhere, yeah. That is. <sighs> I don't know how uh, the fuck the keys work. That's a question for Messi or maybe Lamb Chop. But I'm told. I'm told this is Wyoming. Don't stay away from the borders, though. No, yeah, no, I 
have a feeling I'm pr there's so much in this place I doubt I'd even want to go outside anyway mostly we're not sure what happens if you cross them <sighs> it's complicated basically or at least as basically as I can understand we broke time and space a little bit to do this and the running theory is that if you cross those boundaries you will rapidly age and die we haven't tested it but it's probably not worth finding out for sure. Right? Definitely looks like she's trying to con like control some kind of feeling, but instead she just kind of is like, <laughs> "Oh my god, Prometheus Bull." That's me. <laughs> Holy shit! I'm. You know, I, it's weird I keep going back to this, but I'm so glad I watched so many movies in the 90s because this is really helping me wrap my head around all this nonsense. Yeah, there's a lot of weird shit that happens here. We kind of traffic exclusively in weird shit. Speaking and of weird I shit. Love I, love, I love this. I don't even know what else to say about it, except... I mean... I, I saw The Matrix! Yeah, it's kind of like that, actually. I was, this, I was at the premiere, man! This program is called The Gossamer Matrix. Okay, um... I guess... Show me cards. Show, what, what, what's your favorite thing here? He grabs you fully by the hand and, like, bodily drags you. Which I'm, is not I'm something most people can do, but he fully, like, toes you behind him. Uh, and he tows you over to Mona Lisa's hearse and puts up the hood and puts a pin in and says, this is probably my favorite. She's, her car is the only one that has all the new upgrades. And you look down into the front end of the car where the engine is, and the engine is contained in some kind of cradle. The engine is not actually resting on anything. Uh, it is suspended in... Uh, almost like an astrolabe, so the, the engine is in the center and then there are a series of interlocking circles that are supporting it in the middle of the engine. He says, so this is Lamb Chop's newest design. It's a gyroscopic engine. Uh, all of the cars are outfitted with gyroscopes so they can't be flipped, but this is the first time we've gotten one on one of the engines and it, it looked like it did just fine yesterday. I'm gonna have to have her do some more tests and try and hit some more stuff, but as far as I can yeah. tell, it works like a dream. Yeah, can I say though, like, for I know yesterday was a lot, but also yes, that whole the whole car stuff. It's so fucking cool. I told you we're a bunch of idiots. Anything that goes fast, that we can drive into something, we probably will. Do you see how excited I am? Do you see? Do you see this excitement that every stupid thing you tell me, I get more excited about? Yeah, it's pretty nice actually. Yeah, I'm 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 really into this. I want it. I didn't think that thing I did with your car was going to work. But I'm really glad it did. I don't know if it would have if Lamb Chop hadn't done all the programming on the car, but apparently you spoke the right language to it. Candy put together my sticks, so I'm sure there's similar code and nonsense in there. But, but whatever yeah. it was, it was cool as hell. It was real cool. <laughs> I don't think a car's supposed to go that fast, but I'm very glad that it did. I don't think it is either. I do, is there a lot of, like, is there a lot of, like, you have to fix, I mean, we were slamming into a car a bunch of times. Well, um, in theory, some of them are going to need just a little bit of hammer, a little bit of paint, but Lamb Chop is nothing if not kind of an angel of forethought and also very aware of how stupid we are. So all the lead, all the lead cars, the cars that you saw yesterday have special modifications that make them more durable than the average car. Okay. Okay. See, look. And he leads you over to Dinah's car, the holographic sports car, the fucking Myrmidon. Lamborghini, essentially. Myrmidon. And he traces his hand kind of across the, the paint job. You don't see any scratches or any body damage on Dinah's car. And you saw how fast she was driving. Says. Yeah. So, it, it kind of depends. You can't load too much into the programming because eventually the car will kind of just stop running. It'll take too much battery. But 
Dino's car has the gyroscopes. Uh, it's also what we call the Dreadnought class because we think we're funny. Uh, it's resistant to smashing, slashing, any kind of rough and tumble damage that you can do to a vehicle. It's resistant to. Um, Mona's car is resistant specifically to fire damage. Uh, it kind of depends. It kind of depends on what you need and when you need. I mean, yeah, it makes it makes sense to have a variety. I thought about offering to bring your bike here, but I don't know how many changes you want to make to it. I mean, it's still going to be my bike, you know? Um, I'm okay with giving it a new coat of paint. I think if we mount a gyroscope in it, it won't ha what happened won't be able to happen again. I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to get my hands on the engine and the gyroscope and then test it, but theoretically, it would be much harder to damage the bike by the time we were done. Riot, we, he says that, and Riot definitely kind of looks at him, and it, I don't know if I want to make, like, a performance roll, see if she's hiding, or, like... Roll, uh, either performance or deception. Yeah, like... Oh, yeah, it's a five. She very clearly is looking at him with, like... You know when you see somebody just says something that makes you care about them so much, and you're just like... <laughs> that definitely happens right there with about, like, the bike. He absolutely clocks it, and he says... Should I take that as a yes? Yeah. Yeah, I think you should. Okay. Um, I could show you more cars. I could do that. We could keep looking at cars. Or we could go hang out while everybody is gone. I won't tell if you don't. I would love to hang out with you. Quite frankly. Okay. And he moves over to his car, which of course you recognize and know very well by now, and walks around to the passenger door. Uh, excuse me, the back passenger door. <laughs> yeah, he did. Hey, I hate this game! <laughs> you know, she, she sees that happens, and she does have a moment of hesitation, and she's like, Actually, I do kind of want to... I, I think I owe you maybe a little bit of an apology. Um, cause, cause you said yesterday, I didn't think you'd come around. Well, I, I got I should explain, I guess, a little bit. Oh boy. I... I mean, I've, you know, screwed around. That's not my... I, I am not a blushing... Whatever. That's not the, the issue. The issue is I, I have this, like... Like, you, you, you like me, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. To clarify, so, I like like you, if that, if that yeah, helps no, things out. Yeah, no, and capital L, definitely the same thing. I'm so I have sorry. have for a long time. I, I had, like, a freak out yesterday because I went and saw your brother with Dinah, and he said that you think I'm hot. I mean, I'm gonna punch him right in the throat because that was classified information, but it's not yeah, information. Yeah, I don't think he was paying attention. He never um, is. But no, he's, he's not fine. He's not wrong. <laughs> I, I guess what I'm trying to say is I, I have kind of been surrounded my whole life by really pretty, um, like, like, ladies. Like, I don't know if you remember this thing from the 90s. It was called Heroin Chic. It was like a thing. Um, but, but, but I, I, and she kind of takes a second and breathes and says, <sighs> okay, I've been like terrified of saying anything because I was always afraid that you, we'd get, you know, cozy and then you wouldn't like what you saw. 
And I know you're a better dude than that. But I, I just want you to know that I've, I've been scared. Well, first of all, I'd like to disabuse you of the notion that you are not a pretty lady. Because that's just patently incorrect. That's just scientifically wrong. <laughs> but you know what I mean. I know what you mean, but... I don't know any other girl who can outbench me. And I, I do, I, that's the hottest fucking thing ever, honestly. That you want to come work out with me and, and fight and get dirty. I think that's awesome. And I would much rather spend time with you than some waif who's going to snap like a twig if, you know, I'd try to spar with her. Okay. Okay. Uh, she's gonna. I, I feel a lot. I feel better. I feel better. I wanted, to, I, but I wanted to tell you that, and that is why it took me so goddamn long, and the threat of death to say it. Uh, well, clearly she's gonna, I didn't she's mind gonna go, uh, And she's gonna kind of awkwardly because she's just having a real good time right now and it's weird and it's fun and it's whatever uh she's gonna grab me give him a big and kiss him he is super into it yes it and gets she's gonna say, i think we should definitely make out on top of the car one of these days um, i think we definitely should yes would you settle for making out inside of the car for right now i will definitely settle for that 100 percent perfect because your and car he, is great <laughs> he closes his back passenger door behind him <laughs> and we are gonna cut away from that and the, the steamy <laughs> handprint on the window titanic style <laughs> <All> titanic. <laughs> uh <laughs> we're gonna go check in with candy <clears throat> oh uh, i got it i got it uh, my glasses from the heart mm -hmm. eyes i was saving them <laughs> for that moment Candy, you are uh, walking with Lamb Chop. Uh, everyone has kind of dispersed and started moving toward the doors, and she waits until pretty much everybody but Dinah is gone, and Dinah kind of smiles indulgently and starts to head up the stairs, and she's, she grabs your hand and she says, there's a faster way. You blink, and you are 15 feet away from where you were, and much closer to the elevator. Well, she that's fun. <laughs> you're not like nauseated or nothing, right? Just before I do it again. Oh, I should have no, asked the first I, time. When I do all the fancy stuff I do, I actually make myself faster. So. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, I like you. Let's go. And she jumps again to the, the doors of the elevator and she waves her hand in front of the elevator and the doors slide open. And she gestures for you to step in ahead of her. And uh, once she gets inside and the door shut, she says, Sherry, if you... I don't even know where to take you. There's a whole playground down there. Okay, okay. I guess... Sherry, where should I take her? And you hear the now familiar voice of the, the automated system, Sherry, say, Well, dear, I suppose your workshop would be the best place to start. That's where all of your in-progress projects are. She says, God, Sherry, I don't know what I'd do without you. Perfect. We'll go... Okay. We'll go, we'll go to my workshop. Sherry, take us all the way down to basement three, please. And you do feel a subtle shift as the elevator starts to move down. And as the elevator is heading down to the basement floor, she kind of leans against one of the the the, uh, the walls that doesn't have the buttons on it, and crosses her legs at the ankle and looks at you, and kind of just looks you up and down and says, "You know, I have heard a lot about you, mostly about your gadgets. I, you should know, Donna is incredibly proud of you." Hey. She never talks about you by name for safety reasons, but as soon as I saw you, I knew who you were. <laughs> I'm kind of hard to miss. Nothing wrong with that. Makes you distinctive, like your work. <laughs> uh, Dinah said that you were interested in making some kind of alert system? Yeah, uh, I think part of the reason things went so off the rails is because so many of us were worried about the other people in town and getting them to safety. And if they've got an alert system that says, hey, take cover, then we don't have things like abandoned running a motorcycle into a shield or 
you know, the terrifying moment of where are everybody's parents? Okay. Or, you know, maybe what had happened at Pearl's could be avoided in future. Okay, would you be able to get me schematics of the underground of your city, the pipelines and, and all the wiring and stuff? Candy whips out her tablet quick out of her rainbow bag, uh, hits a couple buttons, and uh, connects to the intranet of here, because of course that's going to be easy enough for her to get into, and swipes it over. She, uh, it pops up on her phone, and she pulls it out of her phone in a 3D model, <gasps> and kind of enlarges it. I want that. <laughs> I can teach you. And she kind of spins it around and tilts it up and down, and she says, yeah, I think if I, Sissy was able to, to hack into the PA system, I think we can use that, but tie it into the perimeter defense, so that if anyone crosses the perimeter, it'll automatically sound. Anyone who's not, you know, supposed to be, anyone who's not already in Beltsville, theoretically. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because right now there's a there's a barrier that's protecting the whole city and hiding all their thermal scans and shit. Uh, so, for example, in a case like that, if somebody were to come through on the wrong side of the barrier, then we could set it so it would automatically go off. Okay, okay, yeah, that's definitely a good start. I, it, she hits a button. Also make a note to talk to somebody that's good with the town. Not me, I'm not good with the town. And talk about bunkers. And it's the, it's the button on her glasses again. Uh, and Lamb Chop says, yeah, I think, yeah, that should definitely be doable. I mean, we defend this place. Uh, yeah, give me, give me like a day or two with the schematics, but I think I can help you. Uh, it's about this time that the elevator gets to the very, very bottom floor. And you can see that the buttons in the elevator are labeled like basement one, basement two, basement three, and then there are a couple that are unlabeled that you passed. And you get down to basement three, and you walk into like a full Tony Stark workshop. It is it is about the same size as the garage that Riot is in right now. Uh, <laughs> it, it takes up the entire basement floor that you were on. Um, Everything is lit with like pink and purple lighting. And she crosses to like a huge, huge black workbench. And she says, okay, I know we were talking about perimeter defense and stuff, but do you just want to see some cool shit? And he's like, yes, yes I do, but real quick, cause I want to see it all real fast. She sends out Huey, Dewey and Louie to fly around and check everything out for her. <laughs> you see, several like almost like cells that are divided by clear acrylic panels it almost looks like one of the levels of the killing jar but not nefarious it just looks like there these are areas where different projects and experiments have been partitioned off um you see a you see a car engine that is in some kind of strange cradle it's not embedded in anything it is just sitting on a table surrounded by tools and the table is streaked with grease um you see a row like a, a wall of monitors it's freestanding inside of a room but there are probably nine monitors three by three uh there is a single chair in front of it and the desk that is in front of the monitors has a 3d model like the one that she pulled out of her phone hovering in front of it uh and all over this workshop you see different things that are in progress and she leads you to her workbench and you do see on one end of the workbench, there are probably 30 or 40 keys, like old skeleton key type keys, very similar to the one that Dinah pulled out of her tax suit earlier, that are just laying on the counter kind of innocuously. She says, some of those will be for you all. Uh, I have to finish cleaning them up and get them to Messi so that he can code them for you, but a handful of those will go to y'all so that if you need to get out in a hurry, then you can. But that's, that's boring stuff, right? That's super boring. Let's get into the fun shit. She, uh, I forgot to mention one thing that you of all people would recognize. In one of the cells, you see a massive still that looks like it's been working constantly. And 
you don't what you don't recognize is what's coming out of it. It definitely smells like alcohol, but it also smells faintly of apples. Even from where you are. There's the a just green a, apple? Red apples. There's a there's just a oh. faint smell of like fre like warm apples that's filtering through the workshop. Um, Merck would like this bit. Well, Merck would like all of this because let's be honest, you know, he was he was a big part of why I am who I am. But <laughs> yeah, I think and uh, I this is a point of clarity that I forgot earlier. Merck broke <laughs> off before y'all even got to the first floor. He and Messi bounced to the third floor. He just kind of like <laughs> be good and just <laughs> went to go see the computer shit. Well, Merck actually listened, so he didn't need to be yelled at. <laughs> Merck is a good boy. You heard it uh, here first. Merck is sober, so Merck could listen. This is true. Merck's operating on a whole different level than he normally is. Uh, Lamb Chop directs you to, like, a, a set of bracelets. They're woven silver. They look almost Norse in the not work design. And she says, now these, these are, we're still testing. We have smaller versions of them. And she points to a ring that's on her hand that looks like the ring that Dinah is wearing. And if you think back, a ring you probably saw on Signe and probably on Sissy, actually. Uh, and she says, so we're, we're working on changing the application of them, but, <sighs> okay, how do I put this? So in, we call them vital sign bracelets. In theory, they uh, make it easier to keep each other alive on the battlefield. They monitor each other's heartbeats and conditions, and you can kind of keep an eye on people. Um, they, they only come in pairs of two at this size. I mean, all the girls in the diplomats have them, just for safety reasons, but for mass application, it's a little tricky getting the technology to work. Which is why they're still here Can on Candy my desk. Can Candy roll Arcana to see if she's got any notes on what might help? <laughs> Nat 20! Nat 20, excellent. <laughs> on a Nat 20, you know almost inherently that they at this size they do work better in pairs uh but for a mass application like say a small militia force that's hanging out in this base um something either something smaller like your necklace or something much much larger like a a belt or a um harness that has the technology embedded in it like the tax suits do would probably work better for a large scale application. You're honestly surprised that she managed to get the technology to work on the rigs. Hey, so I think if you kind of wove it, like the connections into the necklace part, but then you had a pendant that had the main parts of it in it, it would work better. But you could also, for the guys, if, you know, they don't want to wear a pendant, uh, line it into the harnesses for their guns. You are good. No, that makes, that makes perfect sense, because it has to, the problem is that it has to attune to the heartbeat, and the reason that they're in pairs of two is because they sit right on the pulse point, but obviously there are other pulse points. You are exactly as good as Dinah said you were. Let me let me show you some other stuff and let's let's see if you've got any other genius ideas that I haven't thought of. Uh, she leads you over to another section of the table where there are pieces of clothing that are sitting on the table. She taps one that is all black and she says, so this one is for Spe Adam Spectre. Not that he really needs it. It's theoretically a stealth suit, but he's been a fucking ghost since we were 16. So it's more just of a more of a precaution. But this, and there's like a, there's a little black dress, essentially, that is laying on the table. And she says, now this, this is for some of the girls. Well, it's for, it's for Mercy and Dinah, but also for Mo, who you haven't met yet, because we don't know where the fuck she is. Um, it, it's similar to our, our rings, but instead of monitoring your heartbeat or anything like that, you can store different outfits in it. 
different outfits and different disguises, I guess. Marcy does a lot of espionage. There are a lot of situations where she's someplace she shouldn't be and she can't look like her. Uh, so rather than her having to pull a Superman and like duck into a phone booth to change, we thought this might be easier and safer. Um, Kristen thinks about Candy's inability to roll less than a 16 on deception. <laughs> uh, you, you ask her about, ask her about some of her missions sometimes. She, she gets some wild shit. Uh, yeah, Candy kind of comes into this kind of built for the undercover. <laughs> Uh, and she, she shows you some other things that she has specifically for Mercy. There is a jade compact. And she says, go ahead, pick it up. Open it. You look into the compact and the face of the mirror ripples. And your face changes. And you now look like Mercy. <laughs> Candy looks at it. Mirror, mirror, in my hand. Make me look like that one. <laughs> uh, and Lamb Chop says, God, you, you are super intuitive. Yeah, you just, honestly, you just say the name of the person that you want to look like. The last thing that I have for her, which it's pretty much done, but I'm waiting to surprise her until she's got both of her legs up and running again. She's going to be mad if she can't use it. Uh, she pulls out uh, a she pulls out a fan but it's kind of like a black spider webby lace and you realize as you look a little bit closer that each of the spokes of the fan are blades and she opens it and closes it she says she's she's got a flair for the drama and so do I so I figure she'll be okay with it and then of course we've got I'm working on some more shit for Spectre because He's having a rough time, and I know that he's going to be down just shooting things for a while. So I might as well test some things. I'm pretty and, sure the wares are with him, and that's kind of terrifying. Honestly, it's been a while since he had a friend that wasn't us, so I will fucking take it. And besides, if they're down on the gun range, they're literally just comparing dick size. That's how snipers make friends. Uh, candy does take off the candy wrapper, and it's like, so with his stealth stuff, Merck and I have this displacement technology. So when I have this on, and like when she takes it off, she's actually like a foot to the left of where Lamb Chop and Senior are standing. So the first hit isn't going to touch me. <laughs> now that is very interesting, Candy. That is, that is quite a piece of work you have there. It's custom too. This was Merck's concession to letting me in the field smart man. I mean, I've heard good things, but it's beautiful work. Yeah, he worries because I'm blind and out there fighting and... <laughs> so what, you're blind? Speck's deaf. Hasn't stopped him. I think people underestimate you constantly. And I think that is absolutely going to work in your favor going forward. <laughs> I mean, I did kind of walk away with uh, getting hit less than everybody else in that fight, and I probably can take less hits. <laughs> Interesting. Candy brags just a little bit. <laughs> Lamchop looks impressed, both by the technology and just by your ability to understand her technology. She says, well, I'll tell you what. We've got three floors of R&D here. They're all, they're all just like this, but we try to keep the explosions on different floors for Dinah's sake, so the stuff that explodes is up on the second, is second basement level. But there's, there's plenty of workspace here. So if you ever want to get out of the house and come work in our labs, you're more than welcome to. Candy looks around and she's like, I mean, as long as there's room to set up a cot underneath my desk, but, I mean, like you, I'm small, so we fit in small spaces. Because, uh, yeah, I like to work until, like, 6 a.m. and then sleep. And Dinah doesn't think it's healthy, but it's when I want to do my best work. Lamb Chop starts laughing, and she walks over to a blank section of the table and puts both of her hands on it and presses, and it sinks down into the floor, and a cot rises up. 
<laughs> she says, I sleep down here all the time. I think you and I are going to get along just fine. We have a little friendship. And we are going to cut away from you just for a second. Because while all of this is happening, Dinah has been working. Dinah went upstairs to her office on the fourth floor and closed her door behind her, made sure that there was no one in the room because she has sneaky friends. And <laughs> Dinah made a phone call. Hello? Hey, Dinah. Can you talk? Yes, yes, I, I can. can. Um, you are well, not well, looking too hot, hot or anything. Bad day okay. yesterday. Very bad day yesterday. Bellsville was attacked. And uh, none of my children listened to me, so I got more banged up than I wanted to. Yeah, it sounds like they would do that to you. Um, God, what's that, like a right hook? You're I green. fought Vesper, and it was not a good idea. I don't think he wanted to kill me, because I'm still alive, but yeah. man, does his right hook, hook really pack a punch. Yeah, I thought it was a right hook, yeah. He stabbed um, me too. It wasn't a good day. Oh. Yesterday oh, yeah. sucked. Okay. Yeah, no, that sounds terrible. Um, I'm pretty far away, so I don't think I can help with stab wounds, but what can I help with? I mean, so here's the fun thing about that. Uh, we did fix the stab wound by pouring alcohol into it and setting the alcohol on fire. So, in theory, uh, I'm oh. good. Yeah, but, mm, don't recommend. Very, very effective. I passed out. Yeah. Uh, I'm calling because after yesterday, I am not equipped to deal with this by myself, and I need to know if you know where Mauritania is. Um, I don't know much, um, so that's probably, I guess, the sign of the bad news from the get-go, but... Nobody knows much about your mom, it's okay. Yeah, um, you would think that maybe I'd be an exception to that, but no, understandably, honestly, no. But, um... What I do know is that uh, she's gone to an assignment in, to the, in the bygones about three weeks ago. Uh, but then since then it's been like a complete blackout communication-wise. Uh, she took my sister with her, um, for the first part of the trip at the very least, but she ended up coming back. Um, not too long ago, I think maybe uh, three days after, three days ago, she came back um, after an accident that happened in Bangor. Um, oh, yeah, I ran into Connie downstairs and she was telling, she was going to put somebody's picture up on the Memento Mori wall and she said that there was some kind of explosion. Yeah, yeah, um, so she got sent back after that um, corporal Virgin um, ended up dying. Yeah, apparently bad days are not in short supply right now. No, no, it's coming in healthy helpings. We're about to go to war here, and I don't think that I can do it without Mo. I don't... I don't think I can get them ready without her. I don't think that they're going to listen to me. And I'd really rather not scrape dead kids off the sidewalk if I don't have to. Yeah, I think that's something that we'd all like to avoid. Communications blackout. Well, Lucy's still here. I can see if I can find her. I mean, it's not like her to reveal classified information even to me, but maybe if I bribe her, she will, she will do that. Honestly, as talented as she likes to think she is, I feel like a good bribe probably would loosen the lips at the very least. Maybe I can go, like, go down to R&D and see if Lamb Chop has, like, a cool new weapon that I can give her, uh, and, and then she'll tell me. Odds are she will, odds are equally high that she will not tell me, but I have got to start somewhere. Better nothing, yeah. Um, I'm sure it could be more help. Uh, That's more information than we had. We knew that she was gone, and we couldn't reach her, and that was it. At least now we have a vague idea of where she is, and maybe we can send somebody on that team to go find her. <sighs> tell you the truth. Yeah, no, go ahead. One thing I do know, um, at least from what Lucy had said, um, 
again, the exact coordinates and everything is still very much classified, even for me. But according to her, they're, they were going, they're heading up to the ruins in Bangor, looking into some weird deaths that were happening. A bunch of weird deaths, not just one or two. Huh. Weird deaths. Okay. Alright. Um, it looks like I'm going to have to send somebody up there anyway just to go find out what the hell is happening up there. We don't hear from that team very often because their tech is so old. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to see if I can send somebody up there to try and find her and find out why a bunch of people are just randomly dying. That's, that's worrisome for a lot of reasons. Yeah, yeah. Um, be careful because uh, the Aerodoho explosion kind of been cordoned off because of, you know, radiation. So that's probably another thing you want to keep in mind. Who do I have that is radiation proof? That's a good question for later. Okay, I will. You know what? I'm going to see if Carpathia wants to go. It seems like the kind of thing that she would run headlong into. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, make sure she's cautious still. Um, but I, would, yeah, I would like to see her in one piece when she gets back. Yeah. Pretty, f- pretty fond of your whole family, so keeping all of you lads kind of priority. Okay. And I know you were just here, right? So I just left base. Um, I was called back to Fort Best One to greet one of the caravans that come with some combat vehicles uh, that are from border. I meant to guide them back to the base to get them refueled. Uh, A caravan, you said? Yeah. Can you let the guess how many? Um. I was in the ocean for a couple of weeks ago and may or may not have broken into a high security prison to get two people out. Um, while we were making our entry though, I saw several combat assault vehicles all rolling out in what looked like a direction out of town. Mm, that's not... No matter where they're going, it's bad, but I would like to know where they're going. Yeah, um, you got to exactly nine, right? Yeah. Well, at least nine. Yeah. Okay. And one um, of them I didn't recognize. One of them, it yeah. looks newer than the others? Yeah, it's a new model, um, the Ares line. As in Hadrian Ares Vesper? Yeah. They let that man design an assault vehicle. That's, that's bad. That's, well, that explains why he was here yesterday. He's looking for a reason to test it out. Yeah. Um, from memory, the ones I couldn't remember, um, one Hachiman, a Monty Morrigan, um, a Longshen. Resembling a combat assault vehicle, either on the radar or somewhere near Fort Bascom. Will you let me know? Because I, I don't know where to send people to stop them because I don't know where they are and that concerns me. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll, I'll definitely let you know as soon as I can. Um, boy, you weren't kidding about the bad days coming, coming the heaps. Yeah, I think that's a good way to go by. We don't drink enough for this. Uh, 
Uh, you know, and I feel like we've earned it. I feel like we've earned just constantly doing shots, but apparently that's, you know, bad for efficacy, so whatever. Okay, well, half of my team has burned all of their, their identities, and they are not wanted, so they can't get back into HQ here. So we're going to be relying on you guys a little more heavily just to, to get information. We've got one person left in the bureau here that has not lost their cover. Um, yeah. Bunch of my people are wanted now, and I... Do you remember, like, when life was easy and all we were doing was stopping civil wars? Yeah, the good old days, yeah. Yeah, like, just, just getting shot at like normal and trying to take points of interest. That was somehow much, much easier than trying to get adult people to listen to me. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, first of all. Um, no problem. I'm going to talk to Lucy and the Carpathia and see if one or both. I know, I'm not going to send Lucy back because your mother will kill me, but I will see if Carpathia <laughs> wants to go. Um, yeah. Just, uh, you know, just need to be extra cautious for, for a little while, just because we don't know where those assault vehicles are. Just yeah. do me a favor and keep an extra close eye on the border. Yeah, I'll keep an eye out and I'll keep you updated if anything weird happens. Um, if I hear back from my mother as well, I'll let you know. Thank you. Um, thank you. I appreciate whatever help I can get at this point. Hey, that's how it was back. This is true. Alright, well, I've got like nine civilians running around this base right now getting a tour so I should go find out where they are and make sure nothing has blown up downstairs but oh, yeah. I will I'll check in with you soon probably after I talk to Lucy and Carpathia and or if your mom turns up by some miracle um, just just stay safe out there okay yeah you too um, before you go just a quick word of advice yeah don't get stabbed Listen, they have these new knives that are insane. They shoot air into your body after they stab you. Clamshot designed them, and I'm a little bit mad at her. Hey, what I'm going to say is phone device of don't get stabbed will probably stop the air part of it, or at least. This is true. I'm going to try to avoid getting stabbed again, mostly because that one was especially deep. And I'm pretty sure it touched a lung, and I would like to not experience that sensation ever again. Yeah, yeah. The life of a soldier, I guess. At least one who's bad at dodging. <laughs> need to work on that. I listen, right after this, we're doing weakness conditioning, and at least four of my team are gonna try to kill me directly, so I should I should figure something out. Okay, thank you, Titanic, really. I, I will stay in touch, and as soon as we find out where these vehicles are. Whoever finds out first, just let the other one know, I guess, and we'll yeah. try not to die. Let's keep on living. All right. Well, I'll, I'll talk to you soon, but not too soon. Yeah. Right. Bye, that was cool as fuck, first of all. That very, very special thank you to Draconics for coming in as Titanic Brown. Just the best. Just the best person Drac ever. I'm so glad that Drac was able to amazing. make it. Uh, He's a great person. Drac is He's eight hours amazing. ahead of us here on the West Coast, so scheduling was troublesome, but he is a trooper and agreed yeah. to pre-record with me. So thank you for that, Drac. Uh, after that phone call ends, Dinah lets the line go dead. And starts to peel off her tack suit and kind of just puts her head down on her desk for a long time. The door to her office opens and a voice says, I mean, right before weakness conditioning is probably not the time to take a nap. <laughs> and she says, fuck you for not knocking, Meridian. Come in if you're coming in. And he closes the door behind him and sets a plate down in front of Dinah 
and the plate is loaded down with macaroni and cheese. And he says, I know you, and I know you haven't fucking slept, and that means you haven't eaten, and you will literally drop dead. You'll drop dead if you don't eat. So I'm here to make sure that that fucking happens. And she says, first of all, you're not my dad. And he says, thank fucking God, because that'd get weird real fast. She says, yeah, yeah, fair enough. I will make you a deal. I'll eat if you split it with me. You don't have to fucking tell me twice. Big Baby made it. And he hops up on her desk and uh, produces two forks, almost as if he predicted this outcome. And as they start to eat, there's a beeping sound in the room. He doesn't really seem perturbed by it, but Dinah knows what it is immediately, and she looks at him with, like, a fork loaded full of macaroni and cheese and says, Are you fucking kidding me? Why do you even have a monitor for your sugar if you're not going to pay attention to it? He says, <laughs> I mean, I don't. Look, it's not making the really bad sound, so I figure it's probably fine for a little while. And she, you're an idiot. You are a stupid man. And reaches into her desk and pulls out, like, three hard candies and slaps them down on the counter and says, Fucking eat those. Juice would be better, but I'm not going downstairs. I said, okay, okay, Jesus. And does kind of put his fork down and unwrap a piece of candy and jam it in his mouth. And he watches her, like, work her way through the plate, and she is clearly, like, it's that thing where you're falling asleep in the plate and just kind of nodding. And he says, look, I realize that I cannot talk you out of weakness conditioning, but I would love it if you fucking went to bed after. To tell you the truth, I would also love it if I went to bed after. Um, it's been a day. It's been a couple days, messy, and I'm. Things are not great. And he hops off the desk and walks around to where she's sitting and bodily, like, pulls her out of her chair so that he can sit down and just settle her in his lap. And he says, Well, I'm sorry about yesterday. My part in it, first of all. I know I promised. Was not planning on getting shot by a sniper. But thanks for the save anyway. As for the rest of it, we've had worse days. We'll figure it out. But we are not going to figure it out if you run yourself into the fucking ground. So, after conditioning, you are going to bed if I have to take you there myself. And there's a pause, and Dinah says, is that a promise? And she says, and he says, well, it depends on whether or not you win. She says, well, I guess we should get our asses downstairs then, Meridian. And does, she kind of like shovels a few more forkfuls of macaroni and cheese into her mouth and then goes over to a floor length mirror, like a panel of the wall that is mirrored and puts her hands on it, much like Lamb Chop did the table in her workshop. And the mirror slides up and brings a, like a safe compartment with it. And she pulls a couple of things out. She pulls out a baton that looks kind of similar to the ones that you've seen the other diplomats carry, but not quite. Uh, she pulls out a... It looks like a length of rope. It is functionally a whip. And she pulls out an arm bracer, which she puts on her right arm, not her left arm. Uh, and she zips her tack, ja her tack jacket back up and she says, Okay, let's... The sooner we get this over with, the sooner I take this nap you keep speaking of. So let's fucking go. And she says, you, yes, ma'am, you're in charge here. You lead the way. And they head out of her office and begin moving downstairs, at which point Dinah says, Sherry, would you please call everyone for me and direct them? I guess I, I guess they're not ready for the chessboard yet. Will you direct them to the war room? And Sherry says, of course, dear. And the rest of you, all of the places that you are, even those of you that are out in the greenhouse, simultaneously hear the voice, the kindly grandmotherly voice of Sherry, the AI say, if everyone could please make their way back inside for weakness conditioning, once you get to the atrium, I'd be more than happy to lead you to where it's taking place. Right, problem, like, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're such like... Prom fully is like... <sighs> yeah, we're we're gonna be late. We're gonna. 
we're gonna, we're gonna be late? No, we can't be late. She's already mad at me. I know, but we we gotta we gotta do something about this. Okay. This whole yeah. situation. <laughs> she's giggling. She's Riot doesn't usually giggle. Full on My friends are dicks and they will absolutely call us on this shit. So we gotta do something about this before we go. Okay, okay, okay. What I do we do about it? I'm, I, do I have time for a cold shower? Probably not. Um, you have a water bottle somewhere? Yes, yes, yes. And he like leans <laughs> over the front bench and like digs in the fucking uh, glove compartment oh, and pulls I out a bottle of water it. and just like <laughs> drops back into the back bench and is just here I, mm. and he kind of just like <laughs> takes a minute to assess his whole physical scene and is like I'm gonna they both end up just like sitting on like on both in the, pa- in the back seat both sitting just like it's like I'm gonna I should I'm gonna get out and stretch I think just <laughs> that's fine yeah I'm... <laughs> um his hair is all fucked up at this point. So is yours. You've got beard rash very, very badly because you just got a little <laughs> bit of five o'clock shadow. Um, and he does get out. He does get out and kind of just brace himself on the side of the car for a second. Just right, right, right. Training. We're going training. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, Not quiet. Right. Hey, Not right. <laughs> you want to hear something kind of funny? Yes. Abandon hasn't slept in four days. That is, that's unfortunate. Is, does, is he going to sleep ever again? I don't know. He's no. trying to do a thing. That's going to be bad for him. Oh, real yeah. soon. And no, no, but we, I've tried. We've all tried. But nope. Well. But anyway. We're not maybe the only after, ones <laughs> Maybe we're after he sees training, he'll feel a little differently. She's been very stubborn. Okay. She's gonna get she'll get out the other side of the car. You both kind of close the, the doors behind you. You see Prom like adjusting his fucking clothes and like just trying to look presentable before he goes to this oh, yeah. this fucking She's thing. Doing the same. She's doing the same thing. Just like looks in the car mirror or the car window <laughs> and is trying to like fix his fucking hair. Just well I I think this is as good as it is gonna get, right? And that's, you know what? Maybe everyone else will be so tired they won't notice. Good we, luck We with can that. hope. <laughs> what if we smeared grease all over ourselves so it looked like we were working on a car? I feel like that would give a way worse impression. <sighs> all right. Yeah, all right. Okay. Let's, you know what? Let's just go face the music and they're gonna, they're gonna say what they're gonna say. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. There there are worse reasons to get made fun of by your friends. If anything, this is the best reason to get made fun of by your friends. I'm 100% with you. So. Off we go. Yeah, you, you start to head back. Uh, Prom <laughs> knows where he's going, so you don't need Cherry to guide you. Yeah. You start to head back. Uh, Signe, Ferris, and Abandon, you hear this call also. Signy starts to to bounce just a little bit, very excitedly. Her eyes just wide. <laughs> Ferris is gonna look at Abandon and say, "You know, still taking bets on those two. <laughs> Not even in a day. All right. That's the way you want to play it. Am I to presume that you all? Yes. I head start. Off? I start racing. I'm like sprinting. I'm sprinting. I don't want. I don't want to lose them. They don't know their way around. So I reach. I reach like each threshold, and then I just bounce excitedly. She's just excited. This can't be good. No, I immediately thought that. Well, I already know. That's the problem. (laughs) Oh, boy. Yeah, I will make an attempt at um, pretending to hustle. 
<laughs> not attempted hustling it, pretending to. Mm -hmm. It's a fake dog. Yeah, I'm not I'm not going that fast. Um, <laughs> mostly because I, I want to hear the sounds of abandoned suffering his way behind me. Which reminds me, abandoned, would you feet. please make a con check for me? Oh, <laughs> Your speed's not affected yet, right? That's not until like day six. No, it is. Oh. No. Day six, I'm dead. <laughs> no, day six, I'm, I'm at zero. Day six, I'm at zero. Uh, I'm at half right now. Mm, now that's I'm gonna not, knock your ass That's not great. That's not great, you said? <laughs> no, I'm rolling at disadvantage. Uh, Put him on I the mean, horse. Look, my, my, my con... Uh, eight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Abandon hope. Rolls. Abandon hope. I have everything at disadvantage right now. <laughs> Things are starting to get weird. You're not <laughs> sure if it's because you're on the starting? fourth day of no sleep. You didn't eat breakfast this morning. You just hear, heard a weird fucking conversation between Sydney and Ferris where they appeared to know what they were talking about, but everything they said sounded insane. And as you are skating after Sydney, the world kind of starts to warp and shift. So it gets a little bit harder to tell how far away Signe and Ferris are in relation to you. And you do get that kind of like uh, Willy Wonka in the tunnel kind of thing where all of a sudden the colors are too bright and everything is just kind of not where it's supposed to be. Um, you stay on your feet. You don't, this doesn't affect you negatively, but you are officially feeling the effects of how long you have been awake. Great. Awesome. Love that for me. <laughs> I wonder, does Abandon have a physical, like, like is this noticeable to <laughs> You me? see Abandon, like, start off fine, and then probably the second threshold that you stop at it takes a minute for Abandon to follow, and then Abandon is not skating in a straight line. Okay, then out of out of concern, I I just kind of like tell tell my my, my boys Ron, Remus and Romulus to uh, stand at at either side of Abaddon just in case he takes a tumble. Abandon, you are skating, and you look down, and almost as if from fucking nowhere. Two enormous dogs are on either side of you. One is white and one is gray. They're not aggressive. They just seem to be waiting for something, and they are keeping pace with you. The road to hell is paid with good attention. Very large boys. <laughs> just looks very confused. <laughs> looks like he's about to start crying. Right? <laughs> As you continue, the dogs do kind of act as bumpers for you, keeping you in one straight line. We gotta go bowling. <laughs> and then downstairs, uh, Candy, you you hear you don't hear it over the loudspeaker. You hear Sherry in the workshop. And as a matter of fact, you as this announcement goes up, you see like a hologram of just a little old lady, just just a nice little old lady who turns around and kind of looks at you and looks at Lamb Chop, and then she makes the announcement. And after she makes the announcement, she says, Dixie dear, Dinah specifically requested that you be there on time. <laughs> Lamb Chop says, well, fuck, all right. I mean, we were doing a Your whole thing here. Your sounds like mine. <laughs> we were, it was, you, know, you know what it's like. You get wrapped up in a project and then somebody calls you to go do some other dumb bullshit. I can get punched in the face anytime. I never get to talk. Mm, fine. Did you see something really cool? Yes. And Candy uses kinetic jaunt, and it like jerks her legs, and so she has like dance like mute movement all of a sudden, and just like twirls to the elevator door, but like ten feet faster than she normally can. <laughs> That's amazing. And That's... Lamb Chop like hop hop hops with uh, whatever she is using to jump through time and space, and catches up right up behind you. And she kind of loops her arm through yours as the door opens. She says, you and me are going to be good friends, I think. Yeah. And then we skip. <laughs> uh, you all eventually make your way to the war room, which is not dissimilar to the one that you have at the mausoleum. It's just larger because the space itself is larger. Um, you see a series of 
uh, diplomats and renegade angels lining the walls. Some of them have, like, snacks. They all seem to be expecting what's coming. You see Dinah, Mercy, Messy, and Tansy standing in the center of the floor. And Dinah looks up as you all come in and says, Signe, you want to come try to kill us? I thought you met. Yeah, yeah, that, that sounds like a lot of fun. I figured we could blow off some steam after yesterday. And Dinah unzips the top of her tax suit. Mercy follows suit and Messy follows suit. And they all kind of like toss them off to the side. And Dinah turns to the Confederates and she, and she says, all right, so here's how weakness conditioning works. As you can see, all of our wounds are now exposed, which means that they are now potential spots where we can be wounded again. The idea is to stop that from happening. Things are going to be a little different today because a lot of us are hurt. So she looks at Mercy and she says, she points to herself first and she says, sword, shield. I can't get my right arm up. I can't get my shield up. So I need you to be there just in case. Mercy considers for a second and she says, well, I'm not fucking fast anymore. So if you could just help me out there, that'd be good. Uh, and she says, all right. And Dinah, uh, takes her baton off of her back and like gestures with it almost like she's trying to start it up and it ignites with purple flame and mercy uh uses her 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 ring which functionally the ring that lamb top told candy about and drops her repulsor shield it's like a like a deep kind of shimmering green and she draws her own baton with her other hand and Dinah says, all right, so this goes until somebody taps or is too seriously injured to continue, right? Cool, cool, cool. Uh, Tansy, if you could have a med kit ready, just, just in case, that'd be very good. Just in case anybody's heart stops. Thank you. Uh, and Tansy nods. And you notice that Tansy has like pulled her hood up and she, her face is pretty black and blue too, but she's, uh, she seems to be moving more fluidly than the others. Um, and as they kind of face off against each other, you do see that Mercy steps in so that her left leg is behind Dinah's right side and her shield is covering them both. And Dinah's arm is out with her baton, just kind of the outside edge of the shield. She says, when I told you yesterday that if you were fighting with somebody and you dropped her shield, they were vulnerable, this is what I meant. My job is to protect her. Her job is to protect me. Everybody got the idea of the exercise? All right. He <sighs> does launch Huey up in the air so that she can see better and actually see what happens. <laughs> you see all of the participating diplomats, except probably Signe, who's very excited, share a look of like, we're getting too fucking old for this. Um, and then they are running at each other. Um, we're not, we're not doing this though, right? We're no. like sidelined right Yeah, now. no, you, everyone oh, yeah. is, is watching this. I mean, I know we're good. <laughs> uh, uh, and they, they just run straight at each other. Uh, Charlie, if you would like to have Signe attack, I, I welcome you to do so. Uh, <laughs> and it's just, it's just me against all of y'all? Uh, it's, no, it's you, Tansy, and Messy against Dinah and Mercy. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. You guys have the advantage. Yeah, all right, I don't mind that. What would you like to do? Wait, do I have to go first? Uh, no. <laughs> you can think about it if you want. <laughs> I uh, am thinking about it. I, yeah, I don't want to go first, though. <laughs> fair. That's totally fair. Uh, you all kind of run at each other, and as you get up to each other, Tansy immediately is just go time and just hammers down with her baton, and Mercy just barely gets her shield up in time to protect them both. Uh, Dinah moves out from behind the shield and is going to use her reaction to strike back. Um, I'm narrating this. I'm not rolling for this because we'd be here for the rest of our fucking lives. Oh, okay. Lives. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and they just barely managed to like catch their batons against each other and use the force to press back from each other. Um, Dinah, attack. <laughs> Dinah steps out from behind the shield and she is like holding her arm against her chest. Messi sees this and runs up to her and says, you're not gonna win that way, and punches her right in where both of her gunshot wounds are. And she goes, fuck you. And he goes, tonight? And she goes, only if you win, we talked about this. And then punches him right in his stomach wound. Uh, they are now both bleeding. <laughs> and and continue on. Um, Mercy is doing her best to fend off Tansy, but Tansy, her face is completely placid. Mm. But she is moving like she is absolutely trying to take Mercy's head off of her body, and Mercy is just barely managing to get the shield up in time to stop all of these blows. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> can I actually run and launch myself at that shield? Yes. I want to jump on that shield. Yes, you definitely can. Roll, Excellent. Roll acrobatics for me. Show off a little bit. Okay. Oh, where I'm at, I don't actually have any die. That That's is okay. Perfect. Actually, I I can pull up your character sheet and roll it for you. Perfect. Right, I am like, looking at the character sheet at least, but right, like leans over at prom and is like, I just want you to know I'm not into that. <laughs> yeah, no, me neither. That's a whole. <laughs> that's a whole that. fucking thing over there. Are any of us close to? <laughs> I'm whispering very. I am very quietly like. But thank you for reminding me, Candy, Ferris, and Abandon. If you would like to roll perception checks on Riot and Prom as they kind of try to move subtly away from yeah. everyone. Oh, absolutely. Oh, also, go for it. I, I want to point out that I have um. I want to point out. Yeah, I, 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 I want to point out that um. I have uh, passive perception 17 and Abandon has per passive perception 18. Um, I'm also like ripping right now. Do we do? Do, uh, I, yeah. get, well, do I get I'm... to roll deception? Absolutely. You can roll deception, yeah. But I, I will roll a regular perception. Yeah, okay, I also got a natural 20 for 21 total, though. I, just, I don't even know what my deception is right now. Okay. I'm going to roll for prom. Five. <laughs> oh, no. 24 uh, with a natural 20. Okay. Am I rolling perception on each? rolling perception anymore. <laughs> oh, no. See, so on the rolled perception, like... I got a uh, 13, but, you know, passive. You're passive. 17, so. It's always yeah. exciting to get a, a natural 20, but I personally would have loved for it to be lower. Oh, <laughs> don't worry. I rolled for prom, too. <laughs> so, while all of this is happening, you have managed to, like, just splash some water on your face and like somehow managed to camouflage the heavy, heavy beard burn that you have. Uh, Prometheus should have taken a cold shower <laughs> and didn't. So Ferris and Candy, you, you see Riot and with Prom and kind of examine them both. And Prom is struggling right now. Candy, yeah, not right. quietly, is going to be like, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one to touch bolt junk this week. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna elbow abandon and say it's only been a day, huh? <laughs> Candy, I will fight you. I'm not afraid to get a child. Whoops. I broke it. Hold on. There we go. Now that's some shit I wanna see. <laughs> you Candy, the barbarian versus the sorcerer? <laughs> Is there yeah. a sorcerer? Bard, so bard barbarian. I want to see how quickly you get laid out. Candy's terrifying. Uh, I just rolled. I rolled athletics instead of acrobatics because your athletics is better. Uh, Sydney rolls a twenty-one. Perfect. Perfect. Because my plan is to jump on the shield and then use the momentum from that ju uh, that jump to grab it and swing it away and open it up. Absolutely. Acrobatic or gymnast style. Yeah. You do. You use the momentum and kind of like catch the bottom lip of it and flip it up uh and mercy is square in your space and you know that her leg she got shot in the leg so she can't get away from you <laughs> uh she does draw her other baton from her back so she is now dual wielding weapons and <sighs> just kind of hunkers down because she knows that she can't outrun you okay <laughs> Brilliant. 
I'm <laughs> quickly learning what weapons I even have on me at this time. <laughs> That's a good mood. I'm just opening character sheet after character sheet and thanking God that I make a character sheet for every NPC so that I have these numbers. Um, okay. Uh, I have the coolest one, a sickle. <laughs> I thought you might enjoy I that. Am absolutely going to whip out and hook against her baton. Uh, go ahead. Roll a... I'm gonna roll a strength check for you. Uh, against her. And see right. who manages Not to hold the on to the weapon. Let's see. Fingers crossed. Then... I love Signe's weird little goblin energy. Just <laughs> leaping full body like a spider on a shield. This is why I'm scared of her. I was trained... Yeah, you'll find out. I really hope I don't. You're gonna learn so much about me here as we be best friends. Candy fully just to let Abandon and Riot know basically what happened just to make fun of prom. <laughs> you manage to pull one of her batons away from her and you see it clatter and roll away to the floor. She's gonna expend a superior a superiority die to trip you. Okay. Go ahead and roll a... What the fuck is the DC for this? Eight plus four. Paris posted two okay. things immediately after one another in the Discord, and one of them was like Riot right now, and I didn't realize that you meant the Homer Simpson gift. You <laughs> meant the weird photos of a Yeti that you posted from Facebook. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what that has to do with it, but okay. <laughs> uh, Sydney, go ahead and roll a dex save for me. Oh, I'm rolling it for you. Yeah, I keep forgetting that I'm the one that's doing that. No, that's totally okay. I'm looking at your sheet and was like, do you want to roll it? You rolled a four on your dex save. <laughs> so you land flat on your back and are now at, well, mercy's mercy. Yeah. Well, I love the view from down here, at least. I do say out loud. <laughs> love you, too. <laughs> gonna hurt you real bad, though. Uh, <laughs> and she is gonna... She is going to... She is not using her regular mace, the mace uh, that she talked about in the meeting. She did roll a 22 to hit you, though. Mm. That's just the attack, though. That's not the damage, right? She rolled the highest number on the die and does 11 damage. Mm. So she, mm. like, once she gets you on the ground, she fully just takes the baton that she still has in her hand and just hammers down on, like, roughly the same area that her leg is injured. <sighs> And then she's oh. gonna back the fuck up. She's gonna get the fuck out of there and try and go get her shit. Uh, Dinah and Messi are now on the ground grappling. Uh, Tansy is like moving in to support you against uh, uh, against Mercy. But y'all have seen Dinah and Messi fight before, and it gets weird fast. So that's just <laughs> a whole that's a whole other thing that's happening over there. Uh, they're 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 both bleeding profusely at this point. You and Mercy have not hurt each other that bad yet, but there's a whole situation going on over there. Um, at what at what point do we? At what point do other people stop it? Just out of curiosity. I mean, you stop. Heard somebody passes out or somebody taps. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You want to stop this show? <laughs> Only if it gets weird. I don't think you know what weird is. Do you? Do you have time for the answer to that question? Oh, God. Probably not right now. No, you don't. <laughs> we'll talk later. Okay. I want to I wanna check something real quick. <laughs> D&D Beyond. Every week we gotta do this? Every week? Every yes. week. Every I'm really week. hoping that they'll get better servers. It's not Twitch, it's D&D Beyond. It's both. Yes. I just wanted to be optimistic for a shame. <laughs> uh, you hear Tansy say in very, very clear English, Do I need to get the hose? At Messi and Dinah. 
Uh, and in doing so, she is casting Word of Radiance against them. <laughs> Sinners! Sinners! <laughs> they each take 15 fucking damage from this French Catholic woman who would like them to behave themselves in the middle of this fight. <laughs> Uh, they hear her voice and immediately like untangle themselves from each other and climb back to their feet and Dinah looks at Tansy and says you promise never to do that again she says well keep your keep your minds on the task at hand she says, we were we we were, were you know what fine fine it's fine we we're working but that's totally fine don't get the hopes uh, <laughs> and they are now squared off against each other again uh, Sydney, you are still on the ground. Is there anything that you want to do about that? Uh, just cough a little bit. And then, Devin, yeah, I'm getting back up on my feet. I'm getting back on my feet. You can't keep me down long. Excellent. Uh, uh, tiny bit winded. Uh, but thankfully, like, I got, I got, I got lots on my plate that lets me move really, really fast. Uh, <laughs> How far away has Mercy gotten from me? Uh, she's probably moved back about 20 feet. She has regained her shield, but her baton- her second baton is on the other side of you, so she has not gotten that. Okay, excellent. Uh, <laughs> can I- can I just Misty step on directly behind her? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Perfect. Could I also maybe summon a packed weapon? I'm gonna say, yes, you can absolutely summon your packed weapon. I will say, though, because of her training, she has advantage against things that she can see. She saw you disappear. Oh. So, because she is not blind, deaf, or incapacitated, she has a chance to save for this. Her bonus is not high, so. Perfect. Still good. She rolls, she rolls a 14. So, Go ahead and roll. Roll your roll your deck. Because I don't yeah. think a fourteen. I don't think a fourteen is high enough to save for that. You, I every fucking time. I know. I know. I know. I wasn't Hold, expecting to, to to fight anybody. I was gonna try to, but that's totally fair. <laughs> I haven't even equipped your fucking pack weapon. Your packed weapon because I also was not planning on actually doing this tonight, and then I got cocky. So. Um, <laughs> The hubris of DK. <laughs> Constantly. We get we get excited, we start having fun, and then things go off the rails. And then, I make, and then I make stupid ass decisions that I then have to follow through on. Where is it? Maybe we should get the hose. Oh wait, that's right, I have other spells. It puts the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. I'm trying to get a couple of cats to get away from each other. Okay, so you roll an 11, which does not hit Mercy's AC. Okay. So you- That was just the distraction anyway. <laughs> yeah, you just appear behind her, and she has, like, you see her, like, stiffen as she realizes you're behind her, and she just, like, she throws herself to the floor as you fire. Fucking really? Fine, 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 totally cool. And she, like, picks herself up and kind of dusts herself off and, like, squares back to face you. Uh, I will say this. After years of friendship with Mercy, you know that fighting her fair is not a good idea. She is from the streets, and she fucking loves fighting. Uh. That's wonderful, honestly. Uh. Love a good, love a good scrapper. Uh. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, I did just now learn about some pretty cool spells that I apparently have. Cool stuff like Witch Bolt. <laughs> if you would like to Witch Bolt your friend right in the face, go for it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I actually imagine. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I actually remembered that I have to roll for you this time. <laughs> that for sure hits her, her AC, so... Let's see. <laughs> oh fuck! I, hmm, that's that's a packed spell. So there's only one level it can be cast at. Cool, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. All right. The maximum. <laughs> uh, 
You do 30 fucking damage to your friend with just a bolt of lightning. What the fuck? Mm. As she is like stand, like as she's like squaring up, you hit her square in the fucking chest and just knock her right back on her feet. And she and lays she, there for a minute. And he is just very loudly, nice. <laughs> it's, she's fought me before too, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she also knows that once this hits her, it, it, it keeps on hitting her. Uh huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anytime I want it to, basically. She, uh, until you use your action to do anything else, mm-hmm. she lays there for a minute and just kind of looks at the ceiling. Her tax suit is smoking slightly. <sighs> mm. I didn't miss that, Signy. Didn't miss that at all. <laughs> Missed you plenty. Didn't miss that. And she does that thing where she, uh, it's its like a, dan- like a dance roll where she flips her legs up over her head and uses the momentum to carry herself back up to her feet. She looks a little worse for wear, but she is by no means, like, downed at all. Uh, and let's see. Right, this little golf clap. Does she have the range? Very impressive. She's just a rich. She's just a rich. My favorite video of all time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she is going to attempt to grapple you as a bonus action. Uh, she sprints back to you and is going to attempt to take you to the ground with her. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll. I oh, I'm gonna roll. Do you want to? Do you want me to roll Dex or Strength? Hmm. Probably in my best interest to go strength. Wow, well, my dex is terrible. Strength. Oh, it's not terrible. I'm actually very well rounded. You did roll a five, so you oh, well. you do just get fucking First thing tackled. That pops in my head when you say very well rounded is yeah, you are. <laughs> you get fully just like linebacker tackled to the ground and twisted into a pretzel. Mm. Nice. Uh, do you, is there anything you want to do about that? Kiss her. <laughs> okay. And Dinah, okay. No, 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 no. Dinah sees this and is like, and y'all were worried about us. <laughs> I'm worried about all of it right now. Uh, Mercy fully returns the kiss, and, like, you're both beat to shit at this point. Like, you're both starting to show signs of, like, dirt on the ground. Mercy's leg (laughs) is bleeding now. Your leg's all fucked up. Uh, and what is... Let's see. So many character sheets. Bear with me, friends. (laughs) So many character sheets, so little time. (laughs) Honestly and truly. Um, uh, can I have it? Can I have it? Can I have it? It belongs to me. Can I have it? Can I have it? Can I have it? Can I have your number, please? Can I have it? Oh, you like, you like, you like Mike and I? There, I was, I have never been more obsessed with anything than that video. Jean Charlotte. Jean Charlotte. Completely broke Spencer. He wasn't ready for the throwback. Yeah, I'm gonna need a minute. I think about that skit all the time. I don't know why. Because it's a classic in a genre. I always just imagine the way the head, her head's moving. Which is like... <laughs> and just the like the wide-eyed kind of vacant stare is usually what really gets me. <laughs> it took me a long time to know that was another woman. That was a woman, and she's in drag. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As a weird man of movie theater. And I'm thinking of old internet stuff in relation to abandon of fires and missiles, but the um, tires. fires, but the tickets are missiles. Fires and missiles. Fires and missiles. Um. Fires and missiles. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna do this. Over here, just like what the fuck? Wait. <laughs> oh my god, that is blast from the ancient past. It feels like. <laughs> <laughs> just so much opening stuff and clicking stuff. Uh, I, 
just have to say I am so thankful for my new computer and going even in D&D Beyond with 15 character sheets up just fine. <laughs> mm-hmm. Real troopers. Uh, Dinah failed her, her save, so Messy, seeing Signy has started to pull out the big guns for this, uh, you all hear an enormous crack of thunder, and then you see Messi on like extricate himself from the fight with Dinah, and he is probably halfway across the room. At least he tries to go, but Dinah is going to expend her own superiority die because she can do that, mm. and uh, she is going to make a single attack and try to catch him by the ankle with her whip. She has a whip too. I told you it's one of the things she took out of her safe. <laughs> okay, now now I feel like we really shouldn't be watching this. <laughs> it's a good save. Uh, and she does she does manage to catch him by the ankle. So you hear this huge crack of thunder, and he starts to make his way, and then uh, like a thin tendril of rainbow cord wraps itself around his ankle a couple of times, and Dinah pulls, uh, and he slams into the ground. And she says, stop running! Uh, and let's see. Why are, Why are you running? Why are you running? Uh, and uh, at this point, Tansy kind of clocks the situation and sees that Mercy has been electrocuted. Signy has been hobbled. Uh, <laughs> Dinah and Messi are just covered in blood. And that's, that's probably fun for them later. Whatever. Uh, it... Tandy is the adult in this situation, and Tandy is going to look around at her friends kind of, like, just wrestling on the ground. And she puts her fingers in her mouth and whistles very, very loudly. That's enough for today. There are plenty of wounds for me to patch up now. You two, bleeding, come here. You are going to need another transfusion. Signy, let me look at your leg. All right. Mercy says, what am I, chopped liver? I got electrocuted. And she says, you get electrocuted fairly often. You will be fine for a moment. <laughs> <And> she... <laughs> She'll be feeling that tingle for a while, boys. <laughs> and Mercy says, I always do. Always. Uh, and uh, you... I wink at Ferris. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Much to think about. <laughs> really makes you think. Jesus Christ. Uh, they they all climb to their feet, and Dinah and Dinah and Messi are now leaning on each other for support. Uh, Dinah has has gotten the mobility back in her arm out of necessity, uh, so they're kind of just like slumped against each other and sheepishly make their way over to Tansy, who was really there just to make sure that nobody actually fucking died in this exercise, um, because everybody is a stubborn asshole. Um, and. They both kind of, like, stiffly get back into their tack suits and zip them back up. And uh, Tansy says, I have not forgotten about you. Don't don't run off after this. I am going to look at your wounds. And I says, I know, I know, I know. It's just, it's a little cold from all the sweat and the blood, so thought I'd cover up. Uh, and Dinah, <laughs> Dinah uses, like, the hold that Messy has on her to kind of swing herself around so she can look at the rest of you, and she says... Welcome to diplomat training. So I take it we're next. I'm not gonna make you do it today. Mostly because I'm very tired now. I could you I would like a nap. I would like some I, food and a nap. I would like you to do that also. Just as your friend, yeah. It would it would be good. I would like Looks some, like you two have some unfinished business as well. I mean the business has been finished several times, but I get your drift. Oh, I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> oh, and Dinah does kind of look over. Because Dinah's been busy this whole time and hasn't made this roll. Dinah's passive perception is 18. So, Dinah kind of looks at you and looks at Prom. A tour of the back seat of your car was not what I meant, Prometheus Volt. <laughs> I saw other things. I saw cars. I saw the garage. I saw the hallway on the way to the garage. I saw the hallway that led to that hallway. There were other doors. Mm -hmm. 
I saw a guy, yeah. You both look too fucking excited for me to yell about this, so I'm gonna let it slide, but at some point, you need to take her on an actual tour of the facility, Prometheus. I'm, okay. Yes, Cap. All right. She says, also, j hit the shower separately, please. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's just like boot camp. We'll see. We're getting the raw experience, right? Clearly. No, it better not have been raw. No! <laughs> you beat me to it. <laughs> Hey, maybe you guys might want to get like do something on your own time because you know there's a lot of shit talking happening. Yeah, that's that's our whole thing. Just, just also, everyone in this yeah, building has walked in on somebody else on this building. So, <laughs> any like uh, little mice or anything that might be hiding in a corner. Uh, one more time, Kristen. Uh, Candy wants to know if there might be like any dead little mites or anything in a corner that she can play with. <laughs> The facility is surprisingly clean. In here, everything is polished. You 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 think that you could find mice, but you'd probably have to go outside or like back down to the basement levels. She just wanted to use macabre de, de cabra. It's such a mouthful to make it down to the floor, but that's okay. I'm. I will say that there are no mice, but you do manage to find just a couple of of bugs that have been like either in the corners of the room or trapped in spider webs, you do manage to kind of get them all and make them dance in a little line up to where the diplomats are standing. And Dinah looks down and just... Jesus we, Christ, have gotta, we have got to get you with Anthony. I, this is a trick I think he'd like to learn, probably. He loves dead bugs. I don't know what the fuck... I don't know what it is about him and dead bugs, but he loves them. They're like his favorite thing. <laughs> you want to see more of this? I, here's the thing. There's a 14-year-old running around here who loves dead bugs, who brings us dead bugs as gifts. So, I mean, if they're gonna do something, they might as well do something interesting. Also, not the weirdest thing I've seen Candy do. Note that I can do that with any beast classified as tiny. Noted. Uh, well, you, you have seen how we train. And the important thing to take away from this is that we do not pull punches with each other because in the field, your enemy will not pull punches. They will not care that you are injured. They are going to concentrate their fire on where you are injured. So when you train, I expect you to fight like you were fighting for your lives. Question, Dinah. Uh, should I bring the... I don't know why I... Should I bring the sledgehammer? Yes. Like, fully? Okay, okay, yes. just... Uh, Ferris is going to raise his hand politely. <laughs> yes, Ferris. Do you have any alternatives for live ammunition? I mean, I guess I would prefer that you didn't use your rifle in the building. Uh, I was talking about this, and the revolver is going to emerge from yet another pocket. <laughs> Lamb Shop clocks the revolver, and she says, Well, I was going to give these to Adam. And Adam kind of just... Just waves like he wants he wants to see how this plays out. Um, she comes over to you and she is going to put one, two, three, four. Sorry, I have to I have to count how many. One, two, three. It's the bullets from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. <laughs> she comes over and she puts five bullets in your hands. They are all, they all have a small, uh, like a coloring on the cap of the bullet. Um, one is green, one is red, one is, let's say, blue, one is purple, and one is orange. And she says, okay, so they all do different things and they're all very, very dangerous. Uh, I would say if you don't want to actually kill your friends, uh, well, no, none of them should be completely lethal. It should be fine. I don't like the sound of should be. Should be is what we deal in most of the time, especially if you're using my shit. I guess I'm sticking to knives. Thank I mean, you, though. Uh, 
I'll find a use for these somewhere. Sure. And she they will them. disappear into the Disney Princess pencil case. Excellent. Spencer, I am going... I can't do it now because I can't open Discord yeah. without fucking up the cameras, but I'm going to send you exactly what she gave you so that you know for the future. I figured, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I do have some questions for you after, uh, after the game as well. Okay. So. Um, Donna kind of looks around at all of you and says, well, I'm glad that you're all getting along, I guess. I'm going to bed for at Please least do. six hours. So... Stay here. Don't stay here. Don't don't fucking break anything. Don't hack anything. I'm play with lamb chop and candy like links arms and skips off. <laughs> Perfect. And Dinah I'm shakes gonna... her head and says, "I am seriously. I am going to regret that at some point. That friendship. That's that's going <laughs> to that be bad for my blood pressure." Candy's going to yell over her shoulder. Well, I already helped fix something, so and sticks out her tongue. <laughs> Go! Get out of here! Uh, Dinah, I did want to real quick, if you don't want to... Nah, I can talk about it later. It's not a big deal. You can ask me now. I'm here now. Well, I, I know it's probably incredibly low on the totem pole, like underground level of the totem pole, but I was thinking about the party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I know that that's, you know, again, very low on the totem pole. But I was wondering about should it still be something on the table? What do you what are, what are your thoughts on broadcasting it? And it not being about Beltsville? I think if you're gonna do that, then you need to train harder than you've ever trained in your life, because I'm not gonna okay it until you all are ready to defend the party. Okay. I just wanted to run you know. I think it's a great idea. I just think that we as sure an organization people are already traveling to us. <laughs> we as an organization are spread very, very thin, and there are pieces moving on the board that I'm not ready to disclose yet because I don't know where the fuck they are. But there is there is a lot happening, uh, and if we are going to put a target on Beltsville like that, then it can't just be diplomats' lives on the line. I know. I, I guess I was thinking I can have a real conversation with you about it another time. Probably after boot camp, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask yeah, hold on, hold on to the idea. I definitely like the sound of it. I just, I have to consider what's going to keep everybody alive. Yeah, no, I, trust me, I just, if I have a thought, I might yell it out, and if it's stupid, just tell me, and that'll be it. Not stupid at all. Okay. Um, speaking of keeping people alive, there is one thing that I would like to do, just kind of wrap up. Sure. My contributions here. Um, after hearing Abandon mention that he'd been awake for four fucking days, um, Ferris is gonna, once he gets a spare moment away from this terrible gremlin that keeps following him around, um, he's gonna go through that, uh, that book you gave him, the, um, Medica Plantarum, see if he can find any recipes for, um, relieving exhaustion. And then peruse the, the alleged greenhouse and, uh, the grounds as far as he feels safe, you know, exploring them for, uh, for ingredients. Roll an investigation check for me. Uh, okay. That's a 24. You not only find, you don't find an exact recipe in the book to relieve exhaustion, but you have worked with herbs enough and have studied this book enough that you are able to kind of read between the lines and see what herbs would match up that okay. would have the effect that you want. And then you are able to go into the greenhouse out back and find I would say 90% of the herbs that you need, and as you are walking back out of the garden trying to figure out what to substitute, you find the final one that you need. So oh. you, you are able to find all of the ingredients that you would need to help with the exhaustion. Excellent. Uh, I will put those in my bag, and we'll save that for later. i make a note of that right now. Fantastic. Is there anything else that anyone would like to do before we close things out? I know it's a little bit early, but I'm dying. <laughs> As we're dispersing, I, I do, because I don't, I would like to grab Vanden and pull him aside for a second. It is not hard because he is not steady right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> you pull him and he kind of sways. And it takes kind a of... minute for him to come back to... 
Are my, dog, are my dogs still with him? Mm-hmm. There are two big Great Danes that are kind of holding him up. I like your I like your new pals. Listen, I just wanted to tell you, um, I don't blame you. I'm not angry. I understand how crazy it was yesterday. Um, I I just needed some time to be sad about it. You know. Oh, that's that's, that's totally fair. You you should be mad about it. That no, I shouldn't. I mean, yeah, I can be mad, but you're a, like, real person, and the bike's got a lot of memories and a lot of things that mean a lot to me, but it's still a bike. And I'm more glad that you're okay. Okay? okay. You... I know you, you blame yourself for a lot of things. Most of them, you don't need to be doing that. But I know you will do it no matter what. Because I know you well enough at this point. Um, and she's going to kind of grab his head and pull him down and give him a kiss on the forehead. And say, but you're my best friend. Okay? I'm not angry. I'm not angry at you. But you please don't be angry at you. Okay. Okay. You look like crap. I feel like crap. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I don't know where I got these dogs. Yeah, that's... Um, I mean, I saw them earlier, but I guess they're your friends now. Yeah, I... I, I'm, a lot of weird shit has just happened, and I'm not really sure how much of it was actually happening. Okay, <laughs> yeah, you wandered off with a uh, Sasquatch, so... Yeah. He was weirdly more normal. I mean, we only met him yesterday. So I guess that's fair for us and him. Tell you what, when you finally get your that whole thing, the sleeping on track, we will uh, probably have, like, you know, boys' night. Um, and we'll do all of our gossiping. Fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. But yeah. Mm. <laughs> Be nice to yourself, for God's sake. So she's gonna like shove him in the face a little bit, like gently, but it's, it doesn't probably doesn't take a lot. Yeah, he, yeah, no, he he's definitely still unsteady. He definitely has to try to catch himself. Uh. The dogs just kind of like just move in and kind of like tighten up against his leg so he can't go anywhere. Whose dogs are these? Oh, they were with you. They're good boys. <laughs> That's all I want. And you note that none of the diplomats are answering whose dogs they are. You know they all know and they're, they're all just letting this happen. Great. Yours now. Maybe, maybe if he wasn't so sleepy, it would be pretty obvious whose dogs they are. <laughs> Considering one little goblin can't stop giggling in the corner of the room over this. Just expect that of her. Fair. Right now. Like, her, her to be enjoying this from him. <laughs> uh. Alrighty. Well, on the note of, of reconciliation and trying to figure out literally who let the dogs out, we are going to close things out for the night. You spent it. I was waiting for somebody to do the joke. Yeah. More like, who let these dogs in here? <laughs> I cannot believe that you just got me with a fucking Baja Man in 2022. <laughs> uh... This, every episode gets more and more fun and more and more buck wild. Uh, thank you so much to Charlie for hanging out with us. Thank you again to Drac for guesting as the illustrious and mysterious Titanic Brown. Um, oh, thank you to the cast for being here. Uh, I'm, I'm DK and also Dinah and also everyone that's not on screen right now. So that's me. Uh, Wraith. I'm Wraith. I'm abandoned. That's Fettuccini over my shoulder because he had to be part of this too. <laughs> um, you can find me at Thundernoia without the X. 
that is in chat because fuck that person. <laughs> we'll get him one of these days. They won't respond to my messages. I don't think they exist. <laughs> I think it would be fun to have them on as a guest. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that person. Yeah, that person. Is right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly who it is. Uh, I'll go next. I'm Allison Farrell. You can find me on It's a Farrell on Instagram. Uh, I play Riot Goodfellas. It's having a really she's having a great time. This is so much fun all around. Making friends, getting a boyfriend. Woo! I'm Kristen. I'm on the internet as Dar Surrealish. I'm also the founder of Rainbows and Razor Blades Productions. We've got two more one shots and a couple of special episodes this month. Then we've got two mini campaigns next month and in June. I'm gonna start running two campaigns in two completely different systems pretty much at the same time. <laughs> Cause, you know, why not? Uh, yeah. Candy basically just yells about junk before she leaves the room again so that nobody can question her about it. <laughs> Excellent policy. What did she say? What? <laughs> and then she's gone. Uh, I'm Spencer, I play Ferris, um, local horse boy and object of unfortunate attention. Uh, we'll see what the, uh, well, I mean, I suppose the cat's already with the bag, but, you know, we'll see how, uh, how the tea goes over next session. I can tell that we are gonna be friends. <laughs> and we'll last but not least. Oh. And uh, <laughs> I'm Charlie. You guys can find me on Twitch at Beat Darling. I don't stream often, but when I do, it's Grand Theft Auto Online Roleplay. Uh, and I've had a blast hanging out with you guys and getting to know this story. This has been such a wonderful experience. And I love each and every person that's here. It's so nice sitting down with you guys. Just want to thank you so much for having Aww. me on and being so accepting of me being here and stuff. You're so wonderful. We've had I've, I've I, every, literally all week I've been like I can't fucking wait for Signy to talk to you. Like I'm so excited. <laughs> I love having guests and I love it when a guest and a character sheet just mesh perfectly energy wise. <laughs> Charlie this brings is for Signy. Charlie brings an energy to Signy that I could never and I just love it. I love it so much. Um, I also want to thank North Shore DM for gifting a bunch of subs in chat. Yeah, I see things a lot of the time happen in chat and can't chat respond. Pretty cool. I like him and a lot. Then, thank you for doing that. A couple people who just like a couple people not related to him. I think that like subbed as well. I think. They're all amazing. Thank like, you for doing that. I saw a bunch of sub stuff happen. It was super awesome. Well, one was uh, Mama Judy. <laughs> Hi, it was Mom. immediately after Riot and Prom woohooed in the car, and I was like, oh great. <laughs> A parent saw. <laughs> My mom is a trooper and has heard me say a lot worse shit than is said on this stream, so shout out to my mom. Thanks, Jude. Alrighty, we are gonna we are gonna go. We're gonna leave and we'll be back next week, same bat time, same bat channel, for more shenanigans and more bleeding and yelling and probably more people making out in cars, to be perfectly honest. That seems like a track that we're just going down now. <laughs> Thank you so All much for joining us and we will we will see you next week. See you next weekend. Bye.